pleasure to journey with you through this one tonight. Tom, these two teams, two out of the last three years, have met in the upper state championship game for the right to go to Columbia and compete for a state title. It seems like every time Dorman and Gaffney get together, the stakes are extremely high. They are two of the top teams in the upstate of South Carolina, two of the best in the state of South Carolina. Their expectations every year are to get back and win a state championship. A little bit of a different scenario tonight. It's a non-region contest. Many believe it won't be the only contest between these two teams this year. Very good chance they will meet again in the playoffs yeah. yet another season. Yeah, realignment in the state of South Carolina, and these two teams are not in the same region, so it's still a very big game, but they both could meet down the line on the way to that state championship this year. A pair of historic powers in South Carolina football, Dorman and Gaffney for the right to stay unbeaten early in this 2020 season. We've got football for you coming up here on Friday Night Rivals. Who? Okay, yeah, test, 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 test. No matter which South Carolina State poll you consult, this is a top five matchup. It's the Norman Cavaliers, the runner-up at the state championship game for 2019, the four-time champion Dutch Fork and the Gaffney team. They beat to get to that state championship game in the upper state title contest. It seems like just a few short months ago, but now here we are a year later, kicking off our South Carolina portion of the football season here on Friday Night Rivals. A short kick from Omar Khan, most importantly out of bounds, no return. And we'll see Gaffney's offense first. The Indians won the toss, Tom, opted to take the football. Yeah, they want the ball. They're a high-scoring team from a year ago, put 33 on the board last week and win over Boiling Springs, 33-23. So we'll see how uh, this plays out. Three-year starter at quarterback, should be good. Andre Lindsay, a three-year starter, as Tom just told you, at the quarterback position, trotting out to lead the Indians to battle. He's an all-region player, committed to Howard. Going to be a bison. Shows them over Georgia Southern. One thing they talk about with Andre Lindsay, a lively arm, Tom, and something we expect to see tonight, his propensity to throw football deep. Yeah, he has the ability to not only throw it deep, but also uh, he can run it as well. He's thrown for more than 5,000 yards in his career and 45 touchdowns. 3,000 of those came last year with 25 TD. 
Trey Lindsay, an explosive player, and he'll go to the air right away. Gaffney on the first play, able to get six or seven yards as he goes to the transfer. Kobe Pesor, Pesor transferring across the state line from Kings Mountain, wanted a chance to play his senior season. Here's a look at the surrounding cast of the Gaffney offense on the Bojangles starting lineup. You mentioned Pesor there. You've got Tyler Smith out of the backfield as well. Natron Johnson, watch him. He's been uh, had a hamstring problem a little bit. Brad Logan's really good as well, and that offensive line, they really like as well. Look at the right guard, the Sawyer Whitman at 6 feet, 256, and a junior. Well, it's uh, nice that you're talking about defense right there. Let's look at the Dorman defense after their first impact play of the game. Well, Dorman with Hudson Lee up front, Andy Smith, Birch gets in there, and Dogan, those guys have a lot of experience. They really like uh, Ryan Johnson at linebacker, and the two corners, Ty Lindsay and, and D. Rice Williams, are back from last year. Those two safeties are a little bit inexperienced. Out near side, that's going to be in the grasp of Marcus Dewberry. So we see back-to-back -back here for Gaffney through the air, at least, the two players transferring in for this 2020 season. Dewberry was at nearby Blacksburg High School, the other school here in Cherokee County, and he decided to come over, play for Gaffney, and you see him with his first reception as an Indian. Also moves the chain, says Gaffney will march across the 50 and into Dorman territory. Bit of delay before throwing that out there as he goes back to Pesor for maybe a couple. You talked about that Dorman defense, Tom. They say on paper this is the best defensive line back for them since the 2009 state championship team. Man, and think about that team that uh, won the state, the 2000 uh, state championship as well. You see David Gutschall in his 28th year, 42 as head coach. Seen it all. Over 400 wins, second in state history in terms of wins to only John McKissick, who, by the way, owns the record nationally for head coaching wins in the high school ranks. The longtime Somerville head coach, the only coach Dave Gushaw trails in terms of total wins. And this is tossed beyond the sticks. Gaffney down near the 30-yard line. It's another dose of Paysour, the 6'2", 185-pound senior with a first Franklin financial first down. He's a North Carolina commitment, headed to play for the Tar Heels. This is what they're going to be seeing at Keenan Stadium before long. He looked right all the way, got, got it out of his hand very quickly. Paysour had seven catches, 110 yards, and a touchdown last week against uh, Boiling Springs in that win. That game was a 26-8 game at one point, became 26-23 and scored late to make it a 10-point game. He's going to be a December enrollee in yeah. Chapel Hill, so he would not have an opportunity to play his senior season if he waited for the spring North Carolina football campaign that is expected. For that reason, he was looking for somewhere across the state line, had family here in the Gaffney area, turned out to be a real good fit. Dan Jones talking about how pleased he is to have that weapon in his arsenal. Well, the game we had last week with uh, Raven Gap and Christ School, we saw a number of players in that game. They in ability to have a high school uh, regular season uh, for public schools in North Carolina transferring in and you've seen a little bit of it here as well. Just trying to develop some chemistry with Andre Lindsay those two transfers. Here's a guy who has certainly had some Natron Johnson there was some question as to whether or not he would play. He was an all-region wide receiver a year ago, had been battling a pulled hamstring. So Gaffney fans, very happy to see number 13 back out there. He is the main returner in terms of receiving impact. Great size, 6'3", 180, the senior. 69 catches, 802 yards, three touchdowns last year. And he and uh, Lindsey have worked together for a number of years as well. Andre Lindsey, perfect on his first five passes stays to the skies and inside the 15 this is caught another dose of Kobe Pesor and the Indians are in the red zone marching with the opening drive of this contest it's another first Franklin financial movement of the chains you know we talked with uh, coach Gudsall and it's a very quick uh, quick set here we'll finish this thought in a moment but, but he had some uh, issues uh, about his past defense even though in the big uh, the big win over Riverside last week yeah, a couple of seniors back there in the secondary but they were role players prior to this season having to really step up and we'll get into it as the game goes along but you have to get things right quick this year a short seven game season just a handful of region games to make your mark as well and this had potential for Gaffney but it's in and out of the hands of Natron Johnson, the intended target. Tell you, he put it right there and had a chance to make that catch and had really good uh, pressure by A.J. Littlejohn there. Or I should say D. Rice Williams. And D. Rice Williams is a guy we need to talk about as well, one, the two of the two cornerbacks. And uh, he, he, that'll be a good matchup to watch tonight between those two. Yeah, D. Rice Williams covers the best receiver on the other side more often than not. He is the lockdown corner for this Dorman defense. 
Opening drive for Gaffney. That's tipped up. It's going to fall harmlessly to the turf. That's the first time that Dorman has been able to get that type of pressure in there. The intended target appeared to be Brad Logan, the senior. He's small but tough, Tom Van Hoy. Boy, I really like him. 5'9", 145, the senior, seven catches, 65 yards, a touchdown uh, last week as well. And he's one of his favorites. And you look at that young man right there, Hudson Lee, coming back as the defensive end, big guy. We'll get into the numbers. We start talking about the offensive lines, but also along the D-line. We're not talking like 165-pound guards anymore. After completing his first six passes, Lindsey drops back on third down and 10, and he's going to be gathered up from behind. Dorman in pursuit, able to get Ty Lindsey there, who makes the stop, and the Dorman Cavaliers coming up with the big third down play. And it's going to be fourth down long for Gaffney from the 19-yard line. A good look on your screen there at Zion Lindsay. Ty Lindsay wearing number six, Zion Lindsay wearing number eight. Both of their names will be called regularly, one would expect, throughout this contest tonight. Gaffney opting to kick A.J. Haynes. He started a year ago as a sophomore, was perfect on extra points. They say his range is about 40. This is going to test the near length of that and he's just a little bit wide had the distance there but a bit wide on this kick and Gaffney will come away empty on the opening drive though they went on somewhat of an impressive march the field goal is no good let's take a look at our Spartanburg Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram keys to the game get us started with Norman Tom. Well, coach uh, in our pregame talking about turnovers always a factor and the and special teams as well in games like this you got to be good in that particular area and then if we saw here in, in the first possession for Gaffney got to be able to tackle in space they're going to get that ball to their playmakers and then Gaffney they've got outstanding speed feel like they've got great athletes they want to be able to take advantage of it and then they do adjust to the many different things that Dorman does offensively. Those are our Spartanburg Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram keys to the game. They have the best prices in the Carolinas. Shop bestprices.com. One number one gives way to another. Here's Zay Foster, a transfer back in for Dorman. And his first pass is nearly disastrous. Gaffney getting a hand on it, but it will fall incomplete. Zay Foster in his senior season had gone to Spartanburg High School, the crosstown rival of the Dorman Cavaliers. After his freshman campaign following the camp of his 10th grade year, played a couple of years for the Vikings, whose old head coach, by the way, is on the other sidelines for Gaffney, Chris Miller, yes. who has come over after finishing his tenure at Spartanburg last year. Played two years for the Vikings, has come back to Dorman to finish up as a senior. And he'll give off right side, dancing through some traffic is Chance Black, and Black is up across the 30-yard line. That's going to be very close to a first Franklin financial first down if it's not one, and it is. They will move the change. You saw Zay Foster. You saw Chance Black. Here's the surrounding cast offensively for Dorman. Put 69 out of the board last week, and Black uh, over 1,000 yards. And you look at Ty Lindsey, he will be uh, in the mix as well tonight. They really like Garrett Williams, very versatile, and big guys up front as you take a look at that offensive line, including the sophomore, Marky Anderson. What do you notice about Zay Foster right away, Tom? He's a southpaw. He's left-handed, yes. Left-hander at the quarterback position. Won't matter on this play as he hands off to Chance Black once again. They tell us they're going to run things a little more to the left due to his skill in that area. You see it there. Here's the Gaffney defense on the Bojangles starting lineup for the Indians trying to put a stop to this Dorman offense. It starts with number 90, Ty Ryan, Tyrion Ingram Dawkins, one of the top players not only in South Carolina but the country. And they like uh, J.D. Dowdle, linebacker, Landon Bullock as well, play inside with their outstanding speed as well. And then A.J. Littlejohn one of the corner racks uh, that's come in as well this year. On second down, Black up the middle, and he's near the 40-yard line. He's going to be stopped third and around two coming. All right, you've already highlighted Ty Ingram Dawkins, number one recruit in the state. He's in the top of the list in terms of his position nationally, right around five or so, depending upon which media outlets you look at. He's one of the best in his position. Big third down coming here for the Dorman Cavaliers. And Dorman dropping and looking to the skies. Foster. Foster finding a little running room. Not enough to get there, though. The Gaffney defense able to come up with a stop. And we'll check in with Mark Cady. 
Hey, thank, thanks a lot, guys. You know, you just talked about a great defense out there. You saw Ty Ingram Dawkins. He's wearing number 93 tonight coming off that field. This is a guy who's being recruited by just about every major college across the South and across the country, right now being led by Tennessee and Georgia, but Alabama's in the mix, as well as many others. This is a guy who has an NFL body already about the age of 18, and sure enough, he'll be picking one of those great schools to be playing out on Saturdays, and he's got a lot more to give as the uh, years go along. We'll be excited to watch his career. Six sacks last week against Bowling Green, and we're going to see a lot of them tonight trying to stop that Dorman offense. And the kick is away. Necessitated a jersey change, no less, Mark, because of the way he beefed up in the offseason. Couldn't fit into the old jersey anymore. He went from 6'3", 275 to 6'5", 305. He's going to be a special player to watch among the many here tonight. Off to a solid start. No score between Dorman and Gaffney. It's game time, and you got a bunch of rabid fans. Drop a big. It's game time, and you got a bunch of rabid fans. Drop a big bow box on it. Eight pieces of chicken, biscuits, fixins, and tea. And represent your squad with an epically official South Carolina or Clemson Bojangles Big Bow Box. Bojangles, it's bow time. 69th meeting all time between Dorman and Gaffney. No reason to believe that uh, there might not be a 70 before the 2020 season is done. These two teams, you just happen to be joining us. The storyline, they've met two of the last three seasons in the state semifinal round. Not quite as much on the line here tonight, but still a tone-setting victory is there for the grabs, even if it is in, in the non-region portion of the schedule for these two. The schedule's so limited, you have to make your mark now. Gaffney back to work. The Dorman defense going to make its mark. Nothing but white jerseys swarming to the football, which is carried by Tyler Smith. Nowhere for him to go is coming out of the pack for Dorman is Cameron Eubanks, among others. Yeah, the uh, freshman or the uh, free safety at six feet, 175, a senior getting a chance to play this year. Got him going laterally, and that's what you want to do. And then the speed and able to close it down, and a great job defensively there. Gaffney backed up. Lindsey is standing at his own five-yard line awaiting the snap. Remember, Lindsey completed his first six passes on that initial drive, which stalled. And this is going to be worse for Gaffney than a stall, but Dorman can celebrate a pick six. It's Zion Lindsey who takes it on in for the touchdown. Red the quarterback's eyes all the way, and Zion Lindsey puts the first points of the night on the board for Dorman. That's a dangerous pass, cross field from the near hash to the far side and jump that and able to take it the distance with the touchdown. So the first impact in this football game comes on the defensive side of the ball. Gaffney in dangerous territory. Look at Lindsey, no doubt about it, Tom. He jumped that right away. Perfect execution defensively for Lindsey. Yeah, it's just a tough pass, particularly in that situation. At the four and a half minute mark in the first period of action, a pick six is followed up with an extra point. That's true. It is seven nothing dormant. This game, these games, when these two teams face off against one another, they turn on moments just like that. First round goes to the Cavaliers. Well, you talked about uh, how long they've been playing. If you go back to 2010, you get another uh, look at it here. Again, that's from the hash mark on the far side. And one-on-one -on -one coverage there and trying to, uh, trying to get that. But, boy, just an outstanding defensive play there. But, I mean, it's a team that uh, 
and teams that you mentioned historically how many times they've met since 2010. It's 8-5 Dorman. Dorman's won seven out of eight, but the four games here are 2-2, two, two, the last four, and, and uh, the widest margin of victory has been four points. We've seen some barn burners here, 49, 45, 48, 45. Two years ago it was 22-19 and a tough finish there. A lot of things going on late. Dorman remembers a little bit of controversy from that game. That was brought up when they talked about their last trip to Gaffney, and certainly you said it. The only win the Indians have been able to steal away in the last handful of games between these two teams. This was a series that was dominated by Gaffney prior to the arrival of Coach David Gutshaw, who's been roaming that Gorman sideline now for nearly three decades, 28 years to be specific. Certainly one of the legendary coaches in this state. 70 this year, he said, I'm going to keep doing it as long as I possibly can. I'm still having fun. I'm still enjoying it. And he's still competing for state championships year in, year out. Why do anything different? And what did he tell us about Bobby Batten? Bobby Batten said he knew it would be time. What, what, when you go two and eight? Something like that. <laughs> Hasn't happened for Dorman yet. They're working 25 straight seven-win seasons. And the kick is going to draw a flag at around the 35-yard line. While they sort this out, think on this, Tom. 25 seasons, a quarter of a century, with seven or more wins for Dorman. None of these players and most of the coaching staff for Coach Gutshaw not alive the last time <laughs> Dorman had a losing season. Well, and the, the only losing season for Coach Gutshaw was in 93 when they went 6-8. and eight. They got into the playoffs 26 consecutive. Uh, if we take a look at some of the numbers there, yeah. Here's a look at the series history between these two schools. We talked about this being the 69th meeting. You mentioned the Dorman dominance of late. And, boy, who can forget those two state championship semifinals from 2017 and 2019. The 2019 semifinal last year, Dorman able to, to pull away a bit when it mattered. But you go back to 17, Cavaliers had to intercept a pass in the end zone at the end of the game to keep Gaffney from putting the winning score on the board and claiming the upper state and the trip to the state title themselves. That's how you said it. Close these matchups have been. We reset and do it again. And this is Ooh. anybody's football, <laughs> but it's going to be gathered up and taken out of bounds. A hold your breath moment for the home fans here at the reservation uh, in Gaffney. Apparently, uh, Dorman does not want to kick that football deep. The first one went out of bounds. And this one, I mean, that's a precarious hop right there, but able to come up with the football. And well, J.D. J.D. Dowdle, Tom, last week had a couple of very big returns as the up man. And Dan Jones said, we're going to make him, we're going to put him back there, see what he can do in the return game as a result of that last week. But you said it, no chances for him just yet. First down and trying to shake it right off is Andre Lindsey as he will give off into the direction of Tyler Smith. And he fights forward for a handful of yards up near the 40-yard line. It was Tyler Smith who did most of the work for the Indians in that win over Bowling Springs a week ago, the 33-23 victory. Yeah, he was outstanding. And he's a guy that uh, is going to have an opportunity to play more this year. And he uh, anticipates, and so does Coach, uh, that he'll have an outstanding season and be able to tote the mail, as they say. He was behind Peanut Kirby last season. Dan Jones called him the lightning to Peanut Kirby's thunder. Kirby more of a, a bruising back, even though he was a little guy, very physical player. The speed certainly there for Smith when needed. And here's that scrambling ability from Lindsey. He's got a first down. He lets you know about it at the end as he lands right on that Gaffney logo into Dorman territory is this Gaffney drive. Well, he can do that. Uh, it wasn't there, the penetration up front, and then he was able to turn on the Jets. And Great game there. Keeps this drive alive. And see if they bounce back from the last time they had the football in that interception. So first Franklin Financial first down at the 45-yard line. Trying to spin through the defender at the 40 and getting down to around the 38-yard line is Natron Johnson. Johnson with the timing already, the chemistry already there to some degree with Lindsey that a couple of the new wide receivers are still attempting to develop, we're told, when you speak to some of the folks around the Gaffney program. And here is Lindsey with his legs once more. They know what can happen with Andre Lindsey's scrambling ability, Tom. One of the main points of emphasis, we're told, this season is to encourage him to stay in the pocket at times, see what he can do with that lethal arm. And his decision-making of whether to tuck it and go with it or find a receiver, be patient, may very well determine the depth of Gaffney's season. 
Well, that first drive got the ball out in a hurry and wasn't forced to be in the pocket and survey and read too much. Two for three on third down. Make it three for four as he has a connection in between the hashes and inside the 20-yard line with Marcus Dewberry. Dewberry, as I mentioned, the transfer from Blacksburg. He has a first Franklin financial first down. Talk about his ability to make guys miss after he catches the football. They said that's what to watch for when the ball is in the hands of, of number 18. He and Brad Logan, in terms of their toughness, might as well be twins. They are two guys going to give you every bit of effort once the football is in their hands. And here is a stoppage, a timeout being called for by the Dorman Cavaliers with Gaffney threatening again. So the Indians did this on their initial drive but missed the field goal. It's the pick six for Dorman that stands as the difference right now as Dan Jones calls his crew over. Yeah, Coach Jones, uh, in his 11th year, he's been here 28 years. And, boy, both these staffs, as we get into that, I mean, the experience that they have and the relationship that they have with specific schools, and you see that throughout the course of high school football. Dan Jones with, you said it, 11 years, 28, been on the same sideline, the same length of time as David Gutschall on the other side. And he was on those Phil Strickland staffs as defensive coordinator when Gaffney made those state championship runs under Phil Strickland. Speaking of state championship runs, it's time for our Ingalls Food for Thought. Gaffney has more state championships than anyone in the state of South Carolina. There's just a little bit of discussion about well, how many there really are, Tom. Yeah, you tell me that story, Jason. You look around and it's 16, and then uh, all of a sudden it, it's 17. But you you know the backstory on that one. The Indians claim 17 state titles. There you see them on your screen. Wow. The 1961 title, the state of South Carolina doesn't necessarily recognize, but the Indians went undefeated. And in a non-usual playoff type scenario, they claim that championship, which is number 17. And, of course, when we're here in Gaffney, we add it to the graphic, claim it for them as well. You see the long-term powers in this state, Somerville and Burns, their names on the list as uh, those who made it happen regularly. And Gaffney's going to make it happen right now. An extra point away from tying it as the Indians find that connection between Lindsey and Johnson. It's a familiar connection for Gaffney. Boy, they're glad to have him back. You talked about bothered a little bit by hamstring. Young man that caught 69 passes last year, over 800 yards, three touchdowns. And, man, with uh, Kobe Pesor and Brad Logan, and we've seen uh, Dewberry. They have a lot of weapons on the perimeter. Footed kicker. Strong into it. And Haynes is also true. So Gaffney offensively answers what Dorman was able to do defensively. A wide open Natron Johnson, and it's even at seven. Election Day is Tuesday, November 3rd. Election Day is Tuesday, November 3rd. So go vote! Sponsored by Jamie Harrison for Senate. The door to the American dream opens through education. Jamie Harrison is running to open those doors for all South Carolinians. Welcome back to Gaffney, South Carolina. You know, after that pick six Gaffney offense, they came off the field and they said, it's just one touchdown, don't sweat it. They regrouped, and as you can obviously see, it did not affect them whatsoever. Had a chance to talk to Dorman's head coach, Dave Gutshaw, before the game tonight, and I said, is your team right now around October 2nd where it normally is? It says, 
Oh my gosh, no. And in fact, we don't even know really what we are yet. Last week, they had a pretty easy run in their first game of the season at Riverside. And so I think they're still trying to figure that out and really only through one offensive set yet. We haven't seen quite what this Dorman offense is capable of, guys. Six plays, 65 yards, two minutes, 18 seconds later on that drive. Gaffney pulling even at seven apiece. Here's the return for Dorman. Chance Black able to get up across the 20 yard line. Well, it is the tunnel, the smoke, the big peach, all the things that make up Cherokee County and Gaffney. And a limited number of fans, Tom, makes it feel a little different than our prior trips here. Only 2,500 or so in the stands tonight where normally you're pushing 10,000 when you see a tight football game between some of these Spartanburg County powers and the Gaffney Indians. But uh, certainly they're making their presence known, those who were able to get in here tonight. Yeah, fans got to kind of look there and look throughout the course of the broadcast here tonight about the reservation. And, you know, seats at 8,000 or so, boy, one of the great facilities, many of them here in the upstate of South Carolina for high school football. And the old reservation across town before this one came along in the 2000s. A lot of memories both places for fans on all sides of high school football. And this is stacked up immediately on the handoff to Chance Black. And you guessed it. Big number 93 in there once again. There's Ty Ingram Dawkins. Not the first time, probably not the last time tonight. He is quite the specimen on that Gaffney defensive line. 6'6", six, six, 300, and Black didn't have a chance as soon as he got the football. The young man was right there making the play. He made many, particularly late last week, in their ball game with Boiling Springs. Four stars, we said number one in the state, top five nationally in terms of by position. He's narrowed it down to South Carolina or Tennessee, we're told. UNC and Georgia were at one point in the mix, but Alabama late to the dance in terms of the sweepstakes for Ty Ingram Dawkins. And he gets a little help on the far side. Gaffney celebrating another stop and coming out of there with a great deal of energy for the Indians is Stuart Cooper. There's Trey Burgess. Take a look at Trey Burgess there, who was able to get on top of that for Gaffney. Yeah, he's right next to Ingram Dawkins, and he's the nose tackle, 6'3, 250, a senior showed his speed and versatility as well and with the double teaming that comes then you uh, end up having an opportunity and the indians forcing a third down and long dorman now backed up the way gaffney was a couple of drives ago Able to elude the trouble is Foster, and the left-handed quarterback loads up. He's got a man in behind that Gaffney defense, it would appear. But getting back there to knock it down is A.J. Littlejohn, and the Indians have forced the turnover in terms of the punting unit coming on now. I'll tell you what, Dave Foster got hit a couple times in this series, and he stays in there and unloads it. Had a man deep, but that's a, a, a long way to throw the football. A good closing speed there to the cornerback, A.J. Littlejohn, to knock it away. From one guy who transferred back to his original school location to another, A.J. Littlejohn, left Gaffney for Chesney his 10th and 11th grade years, has come back from nearby Chesney to play his senior season out here at Gaffney. They talk about how he can fly. You saw him close and get to the football. You also saw the arm strength of Zay Foster there to some degree. This is going to be out of bounds. Still in Dorman territory, and the Indians are going to have excellent field position at the 40-yard line following the punt. Hey, you can't be credit because they had the interception by Zion Lindsay, and all of a sudden down 7 nothing. How would they come back? Well, they responded uh, very well and got that touchdown. And then uh, the defense came on, and this is a Dorman team that scored on the first six possessions last week, 9 out of 10 uh, at, at one point in the game, and a 69-24 win, and they've done a good job defensively against a really good Dorman offensive team. Well, we've seen the special teams elements begin to factor in already. One point of concern with such a short offseason to get ready for both these teams. Loading up, hitting his man at the 30-yard line. Let's see if this is caught. Appears to be. As credit will be given for the reception, and that should be enough for a first down as Paysour is on the receiving end once more. He is a good-looking young man as well. 6'2", 185, the senior opposite of Natron Johnson. Takes us to the end of the first quarter. That's the first Franklin financial first down, the final one of the first period. Dorman with a defensive score, Gaffney with an offensive score. About what you expected when you get a couple of the top teams in the state together 
here in Cherokee County tonight. 7-7, seven, seven, Dorman Gaffney after one. I mean, you got a bunch of rabid fans. It's game time, and you got a bunch of rabid fans. Drop a big bow box on it. Eight pieces of chicken, biscuits, fixins, and tea. And represent your squad with an epically official South Carolina or Clemson Bojangles Big Bow Box. Bojangles, it's bow time. No real surprises here, just entertaining football in a series that dates back to 1964 between the Indians of Gaffney, the Cavaliers of Dorman. The question tonight, who's going to play the best 48? Now well, through one period of action, as this is given off to Tyler Smith, who finds some room inside the 20-yard line. Who do you give the nod to, Tom, in terms of what you've seen? What are your reflections uh, upon that first quarter uh, of action? I think Gaffney's been able to move the football uh, offensively. Had the, the one blip on the radar screen there for the interception of the touchdown. And, boy, their defense has been really, really good against uh, Dorman, who put 69 of the board against Riverside. He's kind of struggled this this year and, well, in uh, the last four or five years as well. But uh, so far, so good for Gaffney. Had the one mistake, but uh, they've been able to move the football offensively. Defense been good. Tyler Smith dances forward for another first down. So move the chains and the Indians in business. That's a first Franklin financial first down for Gaffney to the 18-yard line. So the 17 there. Call it the 17-yard line. As Lindsey sees some space and decides to go to the skies. Whoa. And looks like we lost a, one of the participants down there on the sideline. Cameron. Hopefully everybody's going to be okay. And it uh, looked to be maybe our Andy Stevens down there. So hopefully Andy is going to be all right. Here is uh, the toss trying to connect with Pesur once again, who had that reception to close out the first period. And that's coming right into your living room, Tom. We're having a tough, tough job down there on the sidelines. And appreciate all the the camera production people do. Yeah. Times put themselves in harm's way. And again, we hope everything's fine with Andy. They're seeing to him as we speak. It's second down for Gaffney. And Lindsey with white jerseys all around him. And he is eventually going to be dropped. The Cavalier is able to get Xavier Birch in there on the stop. Birch, a guy who earned his spot by beating out a returning defensive line starter from a year ago. That's how impressive he was in the work he did in the offseason, challenging though it may have been, to find his way onto that Dorman line. And they, they feel like it's going to be an outstanding uh, D line and big guys. I mean, Birch at 250, Andy Smith at 270, Hudson back, the defensive end, Hudson Lee at 240, and then uh, Rashawn Dogan at 215 out on the right defensive end. So after the change of quarter, Gaffney now facing a third and long as the 
Changeover stalled things just a bit. This is incomplete. And Dorman's defense stiffens its neck now after the very short punt. And Gaffney set up a nice field position. This Dorman D really impresses yeah, on this possession. Kind of settling in a little bit. I mean, uh, you have to adjust. And Lindsay, you can tell that uh, he's a veteran out there and kind of dances a little bit. I think he's made some pretty good decisions where to pull it down and where to throw it deep. Gaffney will try another field goal. Remember, the Indians with the miss a bit earlier. This one from right about the same distance. It's set up on the right hash. It's going to be a 37-yard try. And a strong left foot into it, but again missed to the right. It was on the other end of the field in that first period. But the same type look, plenty of distance, just not able to get it between the uprights. So it stays where it is. Early second period, seven all between the Cavaliers and the Indians. It's the Ingles Market Phil Gold Challenge. It's the Ingles Market Phil Gold Challenge. For every Phil Gold scored throughout the game, Ingles will be donating $100 to the Boys and Girls Clubs of South Carolina. Good luck to all the athletes and teams playing tonight from Ingles Markets, where your savings say something. Well, it is so we confirmed our cameraman, Andy Stevens, down there being tended to, and certainly we wish all the best for Andy. There he is. He's up and talking, so hopefully he's going to be completely all right there. Personnel here at Gaffney taking care of him very nicely and uh, good to see Andy at least up and hopefully he'll be back to action before very long. Here's the first down play for Dorman after the missed field goal. Second missed field goal for Gaffney at right about the same distance. Just under 40 yards and we'll see what the Cavaliers can do with the football. Weaving through and getting up to the 25-yard line is Zay Foster. Tom, a non-region battle between Dorman and Gaffney. We've alluded to the fact that that's a little different a couple of times. They generally occupy Region 2 5A, and for years before the 5A ranks were added in South Carolina, occupied Region 2 4A together. But Gaffney being kind of the outlier from a, a standpoint of geography, is kind of ping pong back and forth between Region 2, and now they're in Region 3. This is the first year under a new realignment in South Carolina. So this game, while it is important to the fans, it is important to the landscape of the state rankings. It will not affect their playoff situation up across the 35 to the 40 yard line. And he tells you at the end of it, there's Chance Black that he just moved the chains with a first Franklin financial first down. Both of these teams have games next week that may very well determine their fate in terms of the playoffs. You have to finish in the top two in your region to get there. And they have battles they are looking a little bit forward to next week that makes this different than usual. Now we have the Dorman and the Burns game, which is going to be another huge game in the state of South Carolina. But eight teams in the region last year, five teams this year. After the realignment, Dorman, Burns, Spartanburg, Riverside, and Wade Hampton this year. 16-yard run just a moment ago by Black. They go right back to him, and this time he is going to be stopped by J.D. Dowdle. If Dowdle rings a bell for you, that's right. He is related to Rico Dowdle of the Dallas Cowboys, who's a Gaffney native, did go across into the state of North Carolina to play his high school football. But J.D. Dowdle is in the upstate top 50, according to the Greenville News, along with a trio of other players from Gaffney. And they'll use him a, a variety of different ways with the Indians on offense and defense. And finding a seam up across midfield and down to the 40-yard line with a head of steam this time 
is Chance Black, who's getting the heavy load here for Dorman on this drive, Tom. Yeah, 6'1", 190 senior, going to get a great block out on the edge, shows patience, and then cuts back inside. And if he gets in the open field, he's got that sprinter speed and can go the distance. And that will put Dorman in business into Gaffney territory at the 42-yard line. Franklin financial first down for the Cavaliers. He's looking to run all the way. This time was Zay Foster. He'll go forward for about nine on the initial play of this series on the first down play. Going to bring up a second and short. Well, he shows his versatility uh, running the football. Six carries, 85 yards, and two touchdowns last week. 42 and 17, but his coach uh, Gutschall told us both of those kind of came off scrambling situations there, but he's 9 out of 11 for three touchdowns. Pretty good debut last week. Absolutely. Second down and short, so the playbook wide open for Dorman, but before the snap, flags fly in from everywhere. We were talking region action a moment ago as this is going to back the Cavaliers up. They're in there with Burns and Spartanburg, traditional powers in their region. There's only going to be room for two of those to make the playoffs because only the top two in each region will advance to the limited playoffs this year because of some of the COVID protocols and the shortened season at seven games. They lose that game to Burns you were talking about next week. Yeah. It's tough footing for David Gutschall and company. That's a huge, huge contest yeah. coming up. And that's why Gaffney's win over Boiling Springs last week was so big because that was a region game. Gaffney and Boiling Springs going over into Region 3 together. And continuing to chase until they finally bring Foster down. And it's Eddie Tate McDowell, the junior for Gaffney, making the stop. One of those situations where... It just seems trying to find something downfield, and you know the versatility that you have running the football and, and the ability to get away. But, boy, with that closing speed, and we talked with uh, uh, Coach this week uh, from Gaffney and Coach Jones, and one of the keys is the speed that they do have on defense, and it was evidence there. Tate McDowell, who played linebacker a year ago, now in his junior campaign, very versatile player for them. See what he can do as he forces Dorman into the third down and long. I have to make Chris Miller very happy. The new defensive coach helping out with the linebackers, particularly and at secondary and the defensive mind that Dan Jones was during his years at defensive coordinator here at Gaffney. Now coupled with Chris Miller. You see the call. It's going to be delay on Dorman and back them up. But how often do you get a chance to hire a coach, Tom? that has a number of state championships under his own belt at multiple schools like Burns and Spartanburg helped turn them into a power. You can bring him on as a defensive staff member. He said, we just reached out to Chris Miller. He said he wasn't done coaching, even though he was finished with the head coaching portion of his career for now. We asked him, do you want to come over? We're tickled to death to have him in Dan Jones' words. And no doubt it's shown up with the way Gaffney's playing defense uh, under his leadership these first two weeks. And there is an incomplete pass near side. But you know what Dan Jones said? He said, I'm just glad to have somebody a little older than, <laughs> little older than me on staff. Well, I mean, it's and it takes uh, the correct personalities to be able to do that. I mean, uh, Coach uh, Coach Miller, the penalty marker on the play, won all those state championships at, at Burns after Bobby Bentley was there and then went over to Spartanburg, and he won a state championship uh, at Spartanburg as well and decided that uh, – he wanted to get back in coaching and, and uh, a nice opportunity here at Gaffney. And it was interesting before the game for us to see all these coaches they were visiting with one another. Absolutely. Enjoying the, the war stories of what it has meant to be at the top of the pile in South Carolina high school football. They've all been there. This is going to land at – well, it won't land. It'll be caught just out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. So – Gaffney set to take over as the defense gets the Indians off the field. Settling in here in the second period on a full moon night in Gaffney. Still knotted up at one score apiece. Furniture Concepts, over $5 million.
Carolina Furniture Concepts, over $5 million of furniture in stock and ready to deliver. Visit their Arden and Waynesville showrooms or go online at carolinafurnitureconcepts.com. You'll want to stay with us at the half. We have the George Sink Injury Lawyers Halftime Report coming up for you from Gaffney, South Carolina. We'll hear from individuals who have made their mark on both these schools, both these football programs. It was a pleasure to learn a little more, and you'll do that uh, about both Gaffney and Dorman at the half as part of the George Sink Injury Lawyers Halftime Report. Gaffney back to work on offense, their own 38-yard line up across the 45 on the first toss as it goes in the direction of Brad Logan. He said, Dan Jones did, Brad Logan, his kind of guy. Dan Jones, a small guy himself, he said, I love those small, scrappy players. And that's exactly how he defined a number three. Does he like me and you? I think so. I said, well, you're talking to him. <laughs> or me anyway. You know, a couple of mid-five-foot broadcasters, five, seven. But you know Speak what? for yourself, Tom. For every um, – well, we can throw Tim in there. He could be an offensive lineman, maybe. maybe. Okay. Well, that's why he does all the hard work for us <laughs> along the way. That's for sure. Our but statistician, Tim to the, Amos. The point of, of Logan at 5'9", 145, because it takes a lot of players like that. We talk about a lot of the players that are going to the next level, and to have uh, contributors like uh, Brad Logan are, uh, are essential to success. Back after making his impact a year ago, and this is going to be on the ground. Oh, Near side hash, really good, another man. dose of Tyler Smith. Stop short, so it's third down and a couple coming for Gaffney as the Dorman defense tries to get back off the field. You see big number 85, Andy Smith in there. Xavier Birch on your screen a moment ago, number 91. Jump pass, and it's off the fingertips of Paysor. Saw some open real estate near Paysor, but just could not deliver it to him off balance. And... Lindsay's pass is incomplete. It's going to bring up fourth down. Yeah, it was incomplete, but you know what you, you like about the decision making by Lindsay? He could have pulled that down and, and run the football. I'm not sure he would have made the first down, but he, and he missed him. But I think from a decision making standpoint, back in the day, maybe when you're younger, a little bit more inexperienced, you might have just pulled it down and run without even thinking about that. First six passes were complete for Andre Lindsay. Now 10 of 16. You saw the rest of it there. Ahead of the fourth down punt. Marlano able to get this away. It's going to go end over end and take a bounce at the 42. Gaffney will end up blowing it dead just inside the 40-yard line. Good stop for the Cavaliers there, Tom. Yeah, it was because Gaffney has uh, had an ability to move the football. They had the one miscue with the 12-yard interception return by Zion Lindsay, but came right back with that six plays, 60 five yards in about almost three minutes and then been able to move the football but a good defensive stand there much needed i think indians net 14 on the punt david gutshaw picked up his 400th win against hillcrest just over a year ago 42 7 was the final in that game last season now he's looking for his 250th win at dorman tonight he's 249 and 82 as the head coach of the dorman cavaliers second in south carolina football history to as we said earlier, John McKissick, nobody with more wins nationally in high school football than John McKissick, but a true coaching legend over there for Dorman. And as his offense goes to work here, Tom, with about half the yardage needed on first down, he was an offensive mind, an offensive innovator when he came across the state line from North Carolina. He's coached at four different schools. He played for the state championship multiple times in North Carolina, has led Dorman to eight state championship appearances, including the two state championship titles in 2000 and 2009 he came in brought the spread throwing yep. the football all over the place he was 70 percent pass 30 percent run and what is he doing now a lot of what you see here keeping it on the ground between the tackles running somewhat of a instead of the, just the old power spread you're used to a wing t out of shotgun formation and uh, Dan Jones said, I'm going to have to rib him a little bit because of the, the adjustments he's made. One thing we've learned about David Gutshaw is his team moves to change right here. He adjusts to his personnel, and that is what has made him a longstanding impact coach. That's why he reached his legendary status. Yeah, well said, because sometimes 
teams have of offensive philosophy and they plug and, and play and it depends on what he who he has and he's had some great players here over the years. Say Foster back as his quarterback after a couple of years at Spartan High hands off here and black is down to the 40 just inside it to the 39 yard line. Now that is right on the sticks. So let's see if this is enough to move the chains for Dorman as you look at the run by Chance Black. Now Black's one of those guys that uh, he has that great speed, but he can take it between the tackles in 190. A couple of plays earlier, we saw Emil Dawkins come in, 5'9", 165, and a junior who burst on the scene last week with 163 yards and three touchdowns. Officials eyeballed it, called it a first down, and Dorman goes back to Chance Black on the first down play. He's got six or seven on this first down run. They talk about his work ethic, the Dorman folks. And you see him giving positive energy in practice. He plays practice like it's a game every single day. He's so strong. His work ethic, in addition to just his body strength, making him a tough, tough individual to bring down. And he has six on the first down carry to Chance Black. Say Foster calling for some motion. Now ready for the snap. Boy, he handled that high snap nicely. And then Foster's going to make something out of it. He's got a first down for Dorman. Talk about making something out of nothing. Zay Foster moves the chains. Tell you what, first off, just even catch that uh, snap. And then to make a man miss right uh, near the line of scrimmage, that was JoJo Good, one of the outside linebackers, a, a guy they really like in that, that linebacking core. But, man, just the, the fact that he caught that snap Save maybe 10, 15 yards. And then he got what, seven or eight on the on the carry. Foster dynamic with his feet as well as what they expect him to do through the air this year. That's a snapshot of it. Now he's going to turn, give back to Chance Black, and Black across the 25. He's down to the 23-yard line. Black, a Virginia Tech commitment. Very physical. Back has talked about his strength just a moment ago. Makes him tough in those short yardage situations. But... The Hokies going to have a good one in Chance Black. we got a player being tended to for Gaffney at around the 21-yard line. Looks as if that is going to be Burgess, who is a little banged up down there. May just be cramping up a little bit. Hard to tell from our angle, but play stopped ahead of this second down effort. Will break away as well. Closing in on the half. Still sits at 7-7 here in Gaffney. Well, just under three minutes away, game action-wise at least, from the George Sink Injury Lawyers halftime report. Gaffney with a sustained drive and an offensive touchdown in Dorman with an interception return for a touchdown, a pick six. And add it all up, seven apiece between these two old-time rivals. Here's the seventh play of this Dorman drive coming up, and it's from the Gaffney 23-yard line, and it's a fake to Chance Black. And now here's Foster. He's going to be covered up a little bit this time around. And the usual suspects, including Ty Ingram Dawkins, who is there to make the stop. You know, you want to talk about a guy that uh, is going to be really good at the next level, really good at this level, is the way he played that with a, a very versatile and athletic Zay Foster. He turned him back inside, didn't allow him to get outside. And 
then was able to bring him down. Just an outstanding play by that young man. ACC, SEC, Big Ten, Big 12 offers. We talked about Alabama getting in the mix on him. But Tennessee and South Carolina currently, according to him, leading the way. And here is Chance Black once more, this time on third down. Black gets inside the 20-yard line. Chance Black, an all-region performer, nearly 1,500 yards and 16 touchdowns in 2019. And you see why they're very excited about his future presence in Blacksburg, Virginia. Just so difficult to bring down. And he's used that stiff arm tonight very effectively. Well, to stand out at wide receiver as a sophomore. Had a long run and a long pass for a touchdown last week. He can beat you both ways. Here's another nice job handling a tough snap by Foster. He's going to be swallowed completely up. Black jerseys swarm and bring him to the ground, but Foster kept that from being complete disaster. The Indians with plenty to celebrate, though, as Gaffey takes off. They take him out of field goal range there, too. He did a great job just to get it, and then you know, with the, the way the timing was off and the cavalry coming, so to speak, able to get that play. So Gaffney with their first down coming here. After the, turnover, down, right? after the turnover on downs, and the Indians set up at the 30-yard line. So back to Lindsey and company. And Brad Logan, the target. Logan going to be slung down by the Dorman defender, Ryan Johnson, the senior linebacker. Yeah, Johnson's a guy that got in the mix uh, last year due to injury. And, had the veteran group four senior linebackers and really stood out a year ago. 5'9", 240, senior now. Let's check in with Mark for an injury update. Mark? Yeah, it's good to see Brad Logan make that reception. You can see his left wrist is taped. He got that done at the trainer's table after coming off the field on that last offensive series for Gaffney. But he's back in the game. That left wrist is going to be a little sensitive, but he seemed to make catches. Gaffney behind the sticks. Thank you so much, Mark. They need the 40-yard line for a first down. And up around the 34 this time for the Indians. Tom, closing in on halftime here, just seconds remaining, 40 and ticking downward to be specific. And the one early score for both teams, that's been it. Yeah, hard-fought football game. It's only the second game of the year, even though we're just <laughs> into October now. And I uh, had uh, successful debuts last week, but boy, you knew this was going to be one. I thought it'd be a little bit more high scoring than it is right now, but it's been very competitive so far as being near the end of the first half. A pick six for Zion Lindsay, a 12 yard return of the interception at the four minute 30 second mark of the first quarter. That started the scoring. Gaffney went on a march that ended at the 211 mark with the 20 yard connection between. Andre Lindsay and Natron Johnson. That's the only offensive touchdown of the game. And as the final couple of seconds sit up on that game clock, that is beginning to appear as if it's going to be all we see in this first half of action. Face mask is going to be called against Dormans. This is going to put Gaffney up near midfield, but again, just a couple of ticks on the clock ahead of halftime. We'll move the chains and we'll put Gaffney at the 45. An entertaining first half. Five time players abound in this game. And the contest itself, as even on the scoreboard at the intermission as it is on paper and in the state rankings, nothing settled in the first half of action between Gaffney and Dorman. It's seven apiece at the break. Well, Tom, your impressions of this first half? Well, it uh, ends up being uh, level at 7-7 and uh, the one defensive play by Dorman. I thought Dorman would uh, be uh, have a little bit more success offensively, impressed with the defensive uh, play of Gaffney so far. And I thought, I thought uh, the Indians were able to move the ball earlier in the ball game. A couple of really short punts by by Dorman, how to shore that up a little bit. But, uh, you know, we go to the locker room uh, tied at seven. We've seen high scoring games between these two. We've seen close games <laughs> over the last four times they've met here. No uh, score more than four points, and it looks like we're headed that way again. Well, the playmakers have not disappointed in this first half, however. We've really seen the essence of Ty Ingram Dawkins' game on the Gaffney side, the Virginia Tech commitment for Dorman. Chance Black has carried a lot of the load for the Cavaliers. So the players you expected to really show out rising to the occasion 
when the stars are bright on a Friday night have done just that. Yeah, they've been able to uh, to do that uh, this evening and will need to continue to do that in the second half. I mean, both quarterbacks, you got Zay uh, Foster who came over from Spartanburg. This is just his second game for Dormant. Dormant. He'd been at Dormant his freshman year. People just uh, joined us and getting back into the mix a little bit there and and understanding the offense. And then you got a three-year starter on there, Lindsey, for, for Gaffney, who's kind of been there, done that, with 5,000 yards passing, 45 touchdowns over the course of his career. I think both of them made some pretty good decisions in the first half. Well, we have caught up with Dan Jones. Let's go field side and get the thoughts of the Gaffney head coach. This is the Carolina Furniture Concepts Coach's Corner with Dan Jones from Gaffney High School. Coach Jones, pretty good start for your uh, offense. You moved the ball pretty well, uh, other than the pick six. Talk about your offensive performance so far. Well, Certainly, we moved the ball pretty well, but we got down in the red zone twice and got stalled out and then didn't get any points on our field goals. But, you know, the pick was a mistake. It was a bad decision. We threw them. We were on this hash and threw a pick on the ticks on their sideline. I might have could have ran out there and picked that off. But Andre's played a great game other than that one bad decision and hopefully in the second half he's going to make some great ones and we're going to be able to get a victory here. When they came off the field they said well, it's only one score they seem to shake it off pretty well. Do you like the leadership and that maturity that you've seen out of your team so far this early in the season? Well no doubt about it you know we're playing a very good football team and uh, Chance Black is as good as there is in the state of South Carolina at tailback and our defense is doing a great job that young man's going to get some yardage we just got to make sure we keep plugging at him and and make him earn every, every yard he gets. Thanks for your time, Coach. Best of luck Thank in the second you. half. It's a football night in Gaffney. Temperatures in the mid-50s, all the pageantry the you would want. Yeah, the number of fans may be limited a bit. You may see some differences for these players, but they've seized the moment. A pick six, Zion Lindsay able to get it done for Dorman on the Gaffney side. The Natron Johnson touchdown reception. Seven all at the half. markets and we are excited about something that we're bringing back this year something that does a lot of good in all the communities that Ingles supports the Ingles field goal challenge Melissa explain that please. we'll start with team Ingles and our our teammates at my 40 Friday night rivals broadcast every all right Indian fans it's now halftime here Friday Night Rivals here on My 40 is brought to you by Ingalls Markets. Mark Kitty along with Alyssa Level from Ingalls Markets. And we are excited about something that we're bringing back this year, something that does a lot of good in all the communities that Ingalls supports, the Ingalls Field Goal Challenge. Melissa, explain that. Please. We'll start with Team Ingalls and our, our teammates at My 40. Friday Night Rivals broadcast every field goal that is kicked during those broadcasts is a $100 donation given directly to the Boys and Girls Clubs in your area. So we are so excited to be able to do this again. Be part of football. It's terrific to have it and be part of this challenge. I don't want to put any extra pressure on those kickers, but it does so much good for the community. It was something great to watch last year on our broadcast. You know, no matter which team is kicking it, you know it's going to do some good, and we're so excited to have it back this season. And, it's, you know, we're excited to have football back in any capacity, so we're excited to be bringing these broadcasts to you. And don't forget, while you're watching football at home, all weekend long, Eagles is your game day headquarters. That's right, Team Eagles has you covered. Back to the game here on Friday Night Rivals.
back to Gaffney, South Carolina on the reservation. Our score at halftime is 7-7. Seven to seven. I'm Mark Kitty, and I'm joined right here at halftime by Brian Robinson of the George Sink Injury Lawyers Halftime Show. And we have the pleasure of you being the principal of Dorman, and thank you so much for joining us. I haven't had a chance to meet you. It's like the second year, I think, as your principal there. You've been at, at Dorman for a while, right? Yes, I've been there for 12 years, my second year as principal. Was this uh, was being principal of Dorman something you thought that would happen in your career, something that you kind of waited for, or was it something that you just took on and, and, and just ran with? Well, the timing had to be right. Uh, it's a great district, and I've worked in this district, like I said, for 14 years. Uh, so it was, the timing was right, a uh, great place to be, and when this opportunity came, I, I just took advantage of it. For people who don't know uh, Dorman High School, a lot of people call it Dorman University right. because, because the size of the campus is absolutely massive. In, in light of everything that educators have had to go through in the year 2020, does the size of Dorman help or hinder your abilities to deal with the COVID virus? I think that, it, that helps us. Our school is over 500,000 square feet, a school that's designed to hold 3,000 students. And right now, because of the number of our students that are virtual, uh, we have 1,700 students on campus, so we can really spread our students out. So it's been a tremendous help for us. Talk about some of the efforts you've done as principal and uh, as well as the rest of your administration to really get the faculty to, to adjust how they teach over the course of 2020. I'm sure there's had to be a lot of training and education. What are some of the things you've had to do and what are some of the things that you're proud of that you've seen your faculty and teachers do in this adjustment? Well, I'll tell you the thing that I'm most proud of is just our students and our teachers. They have really embraced the safety procedures that we have in place. Uh, when students enter our building, they, we take their temperature. All of our students are required to wear a mask during transition. All of our desks are at least six feet apart. And our students just want to be in school. And they've done everything that we've asked them to do. So it's just been a pleasure to be the principal of Dorman High School this year. It's just been great with, all, with everyone. Every principal leaves his or her mark on their school. What is your mark when you want those students to leave the hallways of Dorman after four years? What, what is that uh, hallmark trait that you hope that they take from you, your administration, that you hope that they just leave Dorman with? I want our students to know that they are first. Everything that we do is for our students. And we want them to know when they leave our school that we did everything we can to make their stay at our high school a success. Brian Robertson, thanks so much for the time today. Thank you. Principal of Dorman High School, Brian Robertson, joining us here on Halftime. We'll be back with more of Halftime and that second half coming your way next here on Bojangles Friday Night Rivals. Fans, drop a big bow box on it. Eight pieces of... It's game time, and you got a bunch of rabid fans. Drop a big bow box on it. Eight pieces of chicken, biscuits, fixins, and tea. And represent your squad with an epically official South Carolina or Clemson Bojangles Big Bow Box. Bojangles, it's bow time.
Well, here's a look at the first half highlights. You're going to see a whole lot of Chance Black, Tom. Yeah, Chance Black headed to Virginia Tech. 128 yards rushing first half for Dorman. He had 370 last week, but you know, got some big block on that front from some of the big boys and got it going a little bit there in the second quarter. Black carried the football 11 times in the first half, averaged 6.5. Each time he touched the football. 190 pounds. You saw the stiff arm there. He's got great speed, but can also run between the tackles. So Gaffney able to get some very positive things done offensively, especially early. Showed a number of different weapons, including the transfer from Kings Mountain, North Carolina, Paysor, who made the catch there. Yeah, five different receivers got into the mix, and Paysor comes up uh, there again. And uh, under Lindsey, the uh, three-year starter. Paysor. Nice job. Got him getting Paysor, who's headed to the University of North Carolina. He'll be playing in Chapel Hill on Saturdays in the future. Here, look at the overall numbers. What jumps off the stat sheet at you, Tom? Well, you know, Dorman got it going a little bit better in the second half. One out of three throwing the football for minus two. That's never good in that particular situation, but held down the Gaffney running game. We know they could do that, but they came out 13 out of 18 throwing the football for 111 yards in the first half. Each team had a couple turnovers. Big one, though, was the interception by Zion Lindsay to get the touchdown for Dorman in this one. Punting game, a hurt Dorman first half. Gaffney had opportunity to miss two well, relatively makeable field goals in the first half. Yeah, you can make up for that passing situation when you rush for over 100 yards. It uh, certainly is uh, Dorman's new forte. You think about the historic Dorman teams, you think about all those high numbers on the throwing side of things. And now in the new era, Coach Gutshaw establishing the run first. It's been all the run. For Dorman tonight, and let's listen in to the thoughts of Coach David Gutshaw. He's now standing by with Mark. Okay, cool. how are you? Well, you're in a fight. Yes. Yeah, we didn't play too well. <laughs> hey, we're right here with the uh, head coach Dave Gutshaw from Dorman High School in the Carolina Furniture Concept Coaches Corner. Coach, let's talk about that first half offensively. Not quite what. We, uh, we thought we might see so far out of your unit. You've had a little bit of trouble moving the ball. Talk about that a little bit. Well, yeah, we're making so many mistakes. We keep shooting ourselves up. Uh, we're not getting the right plays in. Uh, you can tell we haven't been in a big ball game. And the kind of mistakes you make early, we're making those right now. So hopefully we can settle down and play a little better. As an experienced coach, I mean, you've been on the sideline for almost three decades. How do you get, get a team to correct those kind of issues so quickly early on in the season. These are kind of early season problems, right? Yeah, this is the first time we've been in a difficult uh, condition. So we're sort of good. We're finding a little bit out about ourselves. But uh, in, in the big down situations, we've busted the plays and that kind of thing. You know, we can't do that. And uh, we, hopefully we'll start improving and we'll settle down a little bit. Best of luck in the second half. Okay, thank you. That's Dave Gutshaw of Dorman High School. Guys, back upstairs to you. Well, we've heard from both head coaches now. A lot of things they would certainly like to improve, Tom, but both of them in a winnable situation, a 7-7 game at the half between the two teams that played for the upper state title a year ago.
maintaining at least six foot distance from other spectators. Welcome back to Gaffney. A pleasure to have you with us tonight alongside Tom Van Hoy, Jason Patterson here. What a first half, Tom, when you look back at it overall. Yeah, 7-7. Seven, seven. I thought this would be a high-scoring uh, game. It didn't turn out to be that way. We've seen some here before. A couple of opportunities for Gaffney. Missed some short field goals, relatively short field goals, and then uh, the interception returned. The only touchdown in Coach Gutschall there. They need to make uh, make uh, better decisions here in the second half. Just get the sense this one is building toward another one of those classic finishes between Gaffney and Dorman. Let's take a look back at our keys to the game, talk about it in terms of second-half adjustments here. The Spartanburg Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram keys look like this. Well, turnover and special team. We talked about, uh, you know, the Cavaliers there, and they, the punting unit has not been very good. Tackling space, I, I think they got better as the, as the game went on, the first drive or so. Uh, opportunities for Gaffney. Gaffney with their speed, they want to be able to take advantage of that. And then I think they've done some pretty good adjustments in terms of what uh, Dorman's been able to do. That was a concern for Coach Jones. There's many things that they do, some motion and some other things, the way they line up. So uh, in that regard, I think it's been pretty good. And Well, Tom, they have been playing high school football in Gaffney, South Carolina for a century, 100 years Tommy Martin, the editor of the Cherokee Chronicle here in yeah. town, wrote a book, The 100-Year History of Gaffney High School Football, foreword by former head coach Bob Prevett, who won all those titles in the 60s. He wrote on the back of his book, and I think it encapsulates what high school football is about, not just here at Gaffney, but you can change the colors, and it's what high school football is about anywhere. He said, this book celebrates those magnificent victories, the heartbreaking losses, all those blistering days on the practice field grasping for air through the mask of a heavy helmet with that thick southern humidity filling your nostrils. It celebrates the thousands of coaches and players that have sprinted out of the famous tunnel on Friday night wearing the gold and black and filling their hearts pound through their chests proudly as they hear those thunderous cheers. He says in Gaffney, football is more than just a game. It's a thread that binds the community together. That's true of Gaffney. Change the colors. It's true of Dorman. It's what makes football in the Palmetto State so special. Yeah, this is an awesome sight here. We're fortunate to be able to do this. You and I walk through that tunnel to the uh, Gaffney locker room and inside as you go, they've got all those state championship dates in there, the years that they were able to do it. Traditions both ways and expectations for both teams as well. And they're what makes it special right there on the heart of your screen. And the Gaffney faithful on this side, of course, Norman having turned out on the other side as well. But you can see the passion, you can see the love in those fans as they file in here every Friday night in the fall for a little high school Pressure football action. On both teams from, you know, former players that played here, brothers, cousins, the whole bit like, hey, you know, you, you, they better bow up a little bit. You get uh, not only that from your coaches, but also from some of the folks that played here and were successful before you. Yeah, you think about Brayshawn Littlejohn, Bradshaw Littlejohn's nephew, and we talked about the Dowdle connection. You hear names like Littlejohn and Bonner and Tate and Dawkins, and the list goes on and on. All those McGill, Hardy, who have played here, made their mark here. Same thing's true when you flip over there on that Dorman side of things. It's not just about what happens on Friday nights. You've got to go to the barbershop next week and hear about it. You've, you've got to move up and down the street. And those former players and the fans, these communities, whether it be Roebuck, whether it be here in Gaffney, they're going to let you know, Tom Van Hoy, how you performed on Friday night. Boy, when you want to play, you want to see the name on the front of that jersey when you grow up in either one of these communities. Dorman with eight state championship appearances since Dave Gutshaw came along. A couple of titles, 2000 and 2009. Gaffney proudly displaying the 17 state championship banners. And marking those years on the scoreboard here at what they affectionately call the reservation. And the kickoff of the second half, we're underway. And we're underway with a solid return from Ty Lindsay, who is into Gaffney territory as the Dormant Cavaliers look to put themselves out front as we begin the third well, quarter. Well, we've seen both teams kick it off uh, relatively short, try to cover that kick into the sideline. Man, Lindsey just did a, an unbelievable job of getting up the sideline. I thought he was going to get hit as he caught the football, but able to break by and then kind of weave his way up that sideline for a good game. There you saw coming off that scoreboard all those proud years, all those proud moments that uh, these teams having Competed with one another. We said it since 1964. That was a 
a championship year for Gaffney. The first time they played Dorman took three years in for Dorman to win it. Cavaliers have owned this series of late, just the one Gaffney win in the last eight tries. But we have highlighted it over and over again as Chance Black has stopped after a, a couple of yards on the ground. They seem to, especially when they're played here, Tom, come down to the wire. Classic finishes are the order of the day between these two teams. And this shaping up maybe in that direction again. What do you see making the difference here in this second half? Well, field position to begin for Dorman here in the second half. And then his coach was telling Mark, just got to clean up some things, get the right call. And it's only the second game. Sometimes we forget that. Yeah, the coach is talking about how you make the most improvement as the pass is caught by Kendall Norman, a wide receiver slash defensive back, the junior. But Dorman inside the Gaffney 30. Talk about how you make your most improvement from game one to game two. And in a year when there were no seven on sevens, in a year when football contact couldn't even happen until this very month, you couldn't even throw the football around until late August, maybe more so than ever, this is a developing situation for these teams. And a big third down for Dorman. It's going to be Foster on the keeper, and Foster is going to move the chains. Two of his scrambles resulting in touchdowns last week. Two of the touchdowns were just what you saw there. He really has the ability, Tom, to make something happen with his feet. Well, he read that beautifully. I mean, he put it in the belly there of black, and you've got to be aware of what he's going to do, and the timing was perfect, and he cut off of that. And uh, he's a dangerous threat when he gets into the open field. Outstanding athlete in the first half. Rushing for 48 in addition to what you have seen from him since we resumed in this third quarter and Dorman steadily marching into the Gaffney side of the field and into the red zone now at the 15 yard line. Second down coming. Big offensive line, 250, 265, 285, 285, 260 across the board and kind of joking with coach on our conference call this week about, hey, when you started North Carolina back in the day, we had your offensive lineman about 165. <laughs> Well, and you ask him, too, as this stays inside and gets close to the marker, you know, what do you do? You always are known for your offensive line. Folks around the state praise your offensive line. Big experience. I mean, an average size of 6'4", as you documented, Tom. And he said, well, we coach them up the best we can, but a lot of it has to do with genes. He yes. said, uh, you know, we can't train 6'3", 6'4", 6'5". Mom and dad have to do yes. that, he said. Yeah, part and, of the process. Uh, certainly that's taken place in that Roebuck area continues to be a revolving door of outstanding linemen for Dorman. Had a, a lineman play for the Jacksonville Jaguars. There are a couple at Clemson right now, one a backup at Duke, and, and that has been the bread and butter of this offense that prides itself on that type of work on the ground. It's a third down conversion as Ty Lindsey moves the chains for Dorman. Yeah, we, for, first time we've seen out of the whatever you call it, Wildcat. Uh, uh, but, you know, remember Adam Humphreys from back in the day? He was very good at doing that. Some others at Dorman. Under Dave Gutshaw, they call it Gata. He Gata. said, okay. when we see Gata, is their short yardage situation that we will likely see either Will Black or, but we just saw Ty Lindsay running that particular package. And it goes back to Zay Foster here, but before he can hand it off to Chance Black, flags are down inside the Gaffney 10 yard line. Dorman on the march, opening drive of the third quarter. It's going to be a false start against the Cavaliers and back them up. Now, remember, this is Dorman looking for its initial offensive touchdown. The score on the board for the Cavaliers was the pick six for Zion Lindsay. I mean, last week, and again, Riverside has been tough for them over that way, but uh, Dorman scored on the first six possessions and nine out of the first ten in a 69-24 win. Tonight, six plays punt, four plays punt, eight. Uh, plays in a punt and then ran 10 plays and turned it over on down. So you're right, first opportunity here offensively to get one. So on first down from the 15, finding enough room and just continuing to push the pile forward. That's where that offensive line pays dividends inside the 10 and down around the five yard line. So Dorman now second down. As there is an opportunity for a first down inside the 10. Here's Another look at just how strong Chance Black is when he digs for every extra yard. Yeah, and a really good decision. If he takes that wide, he's probably not going to get but maybe a yard or two, but he cut it back inside off a really good block. And check that second and goal as it's 
going to be in the grasp of Ty Lindsey again. And Lindsey goes into the end zone. Dorman does have its first offensive touchdown. So that close to the goal line package paying dividends for the Cavaliers. Dorman out front once more at 13-7. Well, set up by the, the kick return uh, by Lindsey as well. And the short kick got it up the sideline, provided an opportunity from the 35. Extra point for Omar Khan. Omar Khan, one of a couple of kickers that made the Greenville news list of the top 50 players in this area of the state of South Carolina. That's how much of an impact player he has been at the kicking position. And you see how much leg strength he has as he punches this right through. Dorman marches on the opening drive of the third quarter. It's first offensive touchdown, making it 14-7. I mean, you got a bunch of rabid fans. Drop a big Bobak. It's game time, and you got a bunch of rabid fans. Drop a big bow box on it. Eight pieces of chicken, biscuits, fixins, and tea. And represent your squad with an epically official South Carolina or Clemson Bojangles Big Bow Box. Bojangles, it's bow time. Dorman with 7.59 remaining in the period. Able to put together a sustained drive, eight plays. And just over three minutes, Tom, to claim a 14-7 lead. Great field position set that up. Saw a little bit of the Wildcats on the offensive line. Got to take control a bit. Black running hard up inside. So a good way to start the second half. And there is Omar Khan putting a foot into it. Gaffney with Landon Bullock there is going to end up with the football at the 30-yard line, and that's where the Indians will take over. Gaffney had little trouble moving the football in that first half, but just the seven points offensively on the board. Yeah, they really did. We thought early on they were able to throw the ball and uh, not too effective running it, but, but Lindsey was good, got to five different receivers uh, in that first half. You mentioned Khan there, but Marco Flores was here last year, 108 kickoffs. 79 of those were touchbacks. Think about that, 73%. So you were starting deep in your own territory. He was a weapon a year ago. Absolutely. One of the main reasons that team made the deep run and onto the state championship. Gaffney on first down, just a couple of yards back to Tyler Smith. Smith, who, as we said, spent all that time behind Peanut Kirby a year ago. They talk about his patience and hitting the hole, his, his good vision. But he's a speedster as well out of that backfield and it looked like there were was going to be limited space but that's not the case as here goes Lindsay down the near sideline he's inside the 25 and it's going to be marked at the 20 yard line well you wondered about the scrambling ability of Andre Lindsay perhaps the senior answers that question with his long run boy he showed his versatility and strength he thought right there going to go down he didn't and then uh, showed his open field ability to run to the football and got a good block downfield by Pesor there before he was run out of bounds. So experience and uh, an outstanding play there. 49-yard run for Lindsey. And now he goes to the air. Got him in right over the middle, spinning toward the end zone is Johnson. 
And they're going to mark him down at the one. It was Johnson who caught the touchdown pass earlier. He finds some wide open real estate here. And after the 49 yard run by Lindsey, this connection with Johnson and Gaffney is on the doorstep. Yeah, throw it to somebody that's open, I think uh, Coach told us <laughs> on our conference call. Good look there. Great camera work. Just shy of the goal line. He was wide open and almost got it in. Johnson not only back from that injury situation, but performing well as he puts Gaffney on the one yard line. And the Indians going to run their own version of the Wildcats, stretching the football forward in order to find pay dirt is J.D. Dowdle. Touchdown, Gaffney. And the jumbo look in there as well. And had to really show his strength to be able to get across 185. Look one more time. Big boy up front. Good block there. And had a hold of him out on the edge. You makes did. He's able to take it in. I guess when Dorman scores, then Gaffney comes right back and scores, right? Whatever one's going to do, the other's going to find a way to answer. That's the nature of this rivalry. And again, that's Rico Dowdle out of Dallas Cowboys fame. That's his cousin from here in the Gaffney area. And uh, probably not the last time Gaffney fans will see that this year. But it evens the score on this occasion. At 14 apiece, mid third, not to be denied, was Dowdle. Election Day is Tuesday, November 3rd. So go. Election Day is Tuesday, November 3rd. So go vote! Sponsored by Jamie Harrison for Senate. The door to the American dream opens through education. Jamie Harrison is running to open those doors for all South Carolinians. One of our most honorable things that we do every Friday night with Friday Night Rivals here is give our chance to uh, say thank you to the host school. And we have Taryn Scribbins, the athletic director, and Eric uh, Gessenacker, who is the principal of Gaffney High School. And on behalf of Friday Night Rivals, guys, we're proud to present to you a check for $500 for the athletic department. Thank you so much for having us here tonight. It's just an amazing environment. Thank you so much. Everyone here in Cherokee County and Gaffney welcoming us with open arms, and we certainly have enjoyed being here preparing for this game this week and throughout the day today. And, uh, again, a small token of our appreciation for all the efforts to make a night like this happen to be able to bring it to you. Live television, not only here in South Carolina, but around the country as the national game of the week. Here's the return for Dorman up near the 17-yard line. Tom, this Gaffney team going on that drive. Remember, the core is back from that semifinal appearance a year ago in which Gaffney went 10-4, and 5-2 and two in that tough region when they were in the region with the likes of Dorman and Spartanburg and Burns. They lost Peanut Kirby. They lost Caden Richards on the defensive side of the ball. Jamari Littlejohn, Stan Ellis, players who have moved on and are playing in the collegiate ranks now. But uh, they have refueled with some of the transfers in. Some of the difference makers and uh, Gaffney on that drive answering Gorman. Here's the trouble that the Cavaliers yeah. ran into, and it was one another. Yeah, DJ Porter bringing it back. Young man we haven't heard a whole lot about, but a lot of folks like him. 6'1", 180, a sophomore, Smith from Arkansas. And Black kind of ran into him and knocked him down. Look at Chance Black accelerate after he received the handoff, really showing his patience there. And that's a movement of the chain. It's going to be a Dorman first down. The flip side, this Dorman team was undefeated whenever they arrived in Columbia to face Dutch Fork for the second time in three years in the state championship. They went 14-1 and one overall, 7-0, and oh, an undefeated run through that very powerful Region 2 5A schedule. 
averaged 43 points per game, gave up only 11 to Dorman a season yeah, ago. Going to win a few games. I think so. <laughs> First down and 10 here. You see a lot of those pieces still back in Dorman. Uh, both these schools, they don't really rebuild. Last year was a rebuilding year, right? And they ended up in the state championship yes. game. These schools don't rebuild. They simply reload. Timeout on the field was 6:08 left to play. When you reflect upon those two state championship games against Dutch Fork for Dorman, yep. two absolute classics. The first time the Cavaliers opted to go for two and try and win the football game in Dutch Fork's reign, and they came up one yard shy. And then last year, pushed the game into overtime. Dorman had the lead after the field goal, but Ty Olinchuk connecting with Jalen Hyatt, who's now playing for the University of Tennessee there, in Knoxville, now a volunteer. They scored on the first play of the game. Those two connected to score on the last play of the game. And Tommy Knott's dynasty continued there with a the fourth straight championship at Dutch Fork. You can see in the South Carolina media poll that Dutch Fork team remains number one in the state right now. And you see how that contrasts with the Max Preps poll in which these Gaffney Indians are the top team in the state. Yeah, Dutch Fork has won four consecutive state championships. That set ties the record in South Carolina. And you know, Abbeville's been there. and. Uh, a couple of years ago is uh, Christ uh, Christ Church as well. Yeah, Burns, you think about what if there are six different schools that have accomplished that feat four times. Nobody's ever won it five times. That's what Dutch Fork is trying to do this year. You mentioned the block, about half the yards needed there. Let's talk big picture for just a moment. Fort Dorchester expected to be just as strong as yeah. Dutch Fork in the lower part of the state. And in case you just maybe had been completely locked in on what we're watching here, most everybody in the state expects this to be the battle for the upper state when all is said and done. These are believed to be the two best teams. A lot can happen. Certainly a lot can happen outside of, you know, the realm of just what happens with football. A lot can happen on any given Friday night as we see cramps become a factor a little bit once again here. You don't know what injuries are going to do. You don't know what, with the pandemic situation in effect, what all is going to happen there. But on paper, these are the two teams in the upstate. Dutch Fork and Fort Dorchester are the teams in the lower state that are expected to really contend for that 5A title this time around. Well, don't uh, rule out Burns, of course. Uh, Burns last week was playing uh, Spartanburg, and Spartanburg's new head coach is Mark uh, Hodge, who won a couple of state championships at Chapman, kind of going back home where he was an assistant. That was a Burns team that was down 14-0, and they came back to win 41-21. Uh, in that game, great to see that young man uh, get up and walking off under his own power. Yeah, best news uh, we've seen as Marquise Bradley, a junior defensive back, is up and moving around. And we go back to work on second down. 14 all, Dorman and Gaffney both with a score piece in the first half. They now have a score piece in the second half. And the Cavaliers, who just a moment ago led 14 7, looking to reclaim such an advantage and hitting the hole quickly is Chance Black and I'll highlight it again Tom his acceleration is something to behold this young man really accelerates when he sees the hole. He does and, and he makes good quick decision it's all set up though by the read by the quarterback and and Foster giving it to him at the appropriate time there are certain reads that you make in the course of a play like that and, and it, it was well done that time and then just you know see a little bit of a crease and that's all he needs and those big guys up front are getting it done as well this is a good defensive line as we've uh, documented throughout the course of this broadcast as well chance black having gone up over a hundred yards now 17 carries for 110 yards for the Dorman running back here's the left-handed quarterback zay foster and the gun slinging southpaw is just not able to connect on the far side with his intended target, Kendall Norman. Norman, another one of those players that you'll see play both ways uh, along the way for Dorman. He, they'll tell you, has the best hands on the football team and a hard guy to bring down if they can get the football in those outstanding hands. Yeah, for a little guy, 5'5", 145, 30 catches last year. So unusual to see him not be able to reel one, even, even though that was a little bit of a tough throw on that far sideline. Yeah, left-handed, rolling right, throwing across your body. He was open, just couldn't quite reel it in. Norman going to be a major factor for Dorman as the season rolls along. Here's the second down play. More of Chance Black, and he's across the 40 and up to the 43-yard line. As the clock dips at uh, 435 and downward here in the third quarter, these two teams have not at any point 
for long been separated on the scoreboard. Yeah, you saw the left guard, Kale Brown there, 56, 6'3", 285, senior pull, able to get just a little bit of a movement there and cut off of it. Two for six on third down in this football game. The Dorman Cavaliers as they face a third and seven. The line to make is the 49-yard line of Dorman. Say Foster looked to be covered but gets out of it and he's going to run for the first down and Zay Foster on a relentless effort will move the chains for Dorman and put the Cavaliers in Gaffney territory with a USC Union first down. And you'll see here a couple chances by Gaffney to bring him down. He wanted to throw it initially, wasn't there, and breaks one and then comes back the other way. A got away from a couple of players that were pursuing and boy outstanding run it looked like on a third down relatively long that Gaffney was going to get off the field again transferred back from Spartanburg and it said you know not a usual transfer the kids grew up with him he was with the program through elementary school he was with them through middle school he played for Dorman as a freshman went all the way through sophomore summer camp before working his way over to Chris Miller Spartanburg Vikings as we see another Indian battling through some cramps there they work with Trey Burgess on this occasion and it when you look at it Tom and and break it down it's such a luxury not only you have that new energy in your program with a player coming back in in terms of Zay Foster but he at least knew a portion of your system we asked David Gutshaw how much of your system did the freshman run how much of it did he know before he departed what did he tell us well, not much. I mean, they had uh, some, but it uh, after being away for a couple of years, I mean, the, the terminology and some other things like that you've got to, and it all depends on personnel, too, what you want to do. We've talked about that before, and Ben Batson came in here and, and some others along the way, and he adapts so successfully to that. And uh, he's got his team right now in a really tough battle here from Gaffney. Yeah, this is a team that... Uh and we'll see him continue to improve and get better as he grasps the system more and more. And there is Chance Black once again. Pretty good gain as he gets inside the Gaffney 40-yard line. And one thing Coach Jones and Gaffney told us, and so impressed with what Norman has done historically, has been the offensive line, the ability to stay on blocks and the patience of the running back. Not just bang it up inside there, but wait. And if you have a little bit of a crease, then you can do what Chance Black has gone over 100 yards here tonight. Yeah, you see his real-time numbers. We mentioned a moment ago he was at 17 and 110, now 18 carries and still climbing. And for Gaffney, Travis Davidson down on the field being seen too. We'll take a break with 331 left to go and a 14 all contest here in the Palmetto State. Well, up under his own power, Travis, Travis Davidson making his way off. And with 3.31 to go here in the third period of action. Norman Cavaliers on the march. You see the fans that have made the trip over from Roebuck. Always well represented on the road. Maybe not quite as many in here as would like to be tonight. But still, enough of a scattering of that mix of light and dark blue on the far side to know the Dorman Cavaliers are in town. You were talking about those two tough losses. Now you called both those state championship games for Sinclair. Right? Absolutely. Boy, Great games. Classics. If you go back, I mean, Dorman's had some crushing losses. 94, they lost to Spartanburg 24-17. Clemson in 1999 off to Stratford 24-70. Both of those were final plays as well. Yeah, Dave, Gutschall, Dave Gutschall has had some of the 
more heart-wrenching of the losses in South Carolina State Championship football history alongside the two championships he did secure. And he'll still tell you as Chance Black runs downhill and finds his way across the 30. Another movement of the change as a USC Union first down for Dorman. That his crowning moment, his crowning achievement, nothing can top that 2000, and that's because the last guy in line was his son, that he hung the medal around his neck. They were able to secure that championship together. They came across from North Carolina, brought his family here. One of the reasons is so that everybody would be in the same district. He could eventually coach his son and then able to hang that banner around David's neck as Dave Gutshaw won his first South Carolina state title with his son on that football team. He, as we said, from a number of different areas in North Carolina, was able to, to build impressive programs. As Black is covered up right away. Gaffney swarming to the football, and the Indians able to get J.D. Dowdle in there once more, who carried it in the Wildcat package for the Gaffney touchdown a moment ago. Coach Gutshaw, Madison Mayadan, Kinston, Burlington Cummings. He played for four state championships in North Carolina. He's the old West Virginia coal mine background is David Gutshaw. So you get a look at the vitals for J.D. Dowdle, who came up and made the stop there. He's got his team on the march. Second down coming as his quarterback, Zay Foster, rolls to the near side. Fires away, left-handed. There's Norman. And Norman going to be picked up, but he's inside the 10 already, and Norman's going to have it first and goal after the USC Union first half. Well, the ability to run the football has opened it up a little bit in the, in the second half. The first half, one for three and minus two yards, and then Norman getting a lot more involved and roll left this time, left-handed, and got uh, beyond the linebackers in front of the secondary and able to get a good gain there. You talked about that 2000 beat Lexington 31-24, and then the 2009 was it beat Burns and Marcus Lattimore 28-17. Absolutely, and then turned around the next year, played Burns in the state championship game. That one went to Burns. It's going to be right in the heart of traffic, and maybe a yard or so. That's all there for Zay Foster. And you know who is on the other sideline that was involved in all that? Chris Miller now, the Gaffney defensive coordinator, right. as was Small on the Burns world, like was on the Burns sideline for the loss and then the win from his perspective. Like broadcasting, you know, yeah. everybody bounces a bit in this business. Well, and Chris Miller's defense now being challenged by him and everybody surrounding head coach Dan Jones to stiffen their neck inside the 10-yard line. He talks about with Chris Miller coming over, not only all of his state championship pedigree, legendary coach in this state, but his energy. And this is going to be tough for Dorman. Gaffney able to scoop it up, and the Indians with a takeaway in the red zone. Gaffney covering up the fumble and taking over as the Indians are able to get Keyshawn Hemphill on the football. That's a tough one. We've seen a couple bad snaps or high snaps that uh, Foster's been able to handle, but this one bounding away. I mean, you were looking at controlling the entire third quarter. You see it again. It's a high snap, and you never know how the oblong ball is going to bounce, and Hemphill there to make the play. The outside linebacker at 6 feet, 190, and a junior. That was the 12th play of the drive. You know, talking about Dan Jones and Chris Miller's defense, they're the ones celebrating here. You see that that same energy that Coach Jones commented about. He said not only do you have the knowledge that, that Chris Miller has, but the kids play off of his emotion. Plenty of emotion right there. Dorman trying to take it right back as Gaffney has trouble hanging on to the football. The handle tough to come by all of a sudden in the final minute of this third well, quarter. I think he, if we get a look at it, I think he wanted to throw the football and there was a defender in his face right there and I think the ball just popped out. And we'll see. I think he did the right thing to get on the ball there. We get one more look at it here. Looks that way. I don't know. I think he just dropped it because the running back was open off that way and then, you know, went down to go get it and picked it back up at a big loss. Boy, Drayshawn Dogan had a shot there momentarily. Gaffney able to hang on in the depths of their own territory at the 12 yard line. And timeout is going to be called for with seven seconds remaining well, in this third quarter of yeah, action. That's a tough timeout with seven seconds to go. I mean, you want to make sure you you had the bad play there and, and you're deep in your own territory, but with just seven seconds to go in the third quarter, you, you, those 
the timeouts become pretty precious. So both teams having burned a second half timeout now. Two remaining for Dorman, two remaining for Gaffney after this timeout, and the Indians backed up behind the sticks, second and long. They need the 28-yard line to secure a first down on this possession. You think of how Dorman has dominated the third quarter, eight plays, 35 yards, got up 14-7, just three plays for Gaffney to score, and then 12 plays, so ran 20 plays to just three for uh, Gaffney there in the third quarter. And, uh, used to a lot of college football back in the day, Jason, and uh, we used to work with a defensive coordinator who was a color guy, and he said, doesn't count, big man, until they cross the double stripe. So good job by Gaffney to hang in there because Dorman looked like they'd gotten the momentum on their side at that point. Two teams that know a lot about it. Certainly happy to have you with us tonight on this full moon night in the upstate of South Carolina. Friday night rivals. Game of the week for those of you watching on stadium, those of you enjoying this game locally. Certainly pleased that you took a moment to share your life with us. And this game certainly giving us all our money's worth in terms of giving attention to it. Ball is on the ground, but the Gaffney ball carrier clearly down. There's a flag comes in at the last minute here, and that is the final play of the third period. Amazing. And now a moment where everyone holds their breath on this home side because Andre Lindsay taking the lick is laid out on the turf at around the 10 yard line. Again, there's a flag there and both the Cavaliers and Indians are going to be sent to their respective sidelines. Tom, ball coming out at the last minute on this lick and you're going to see it right in the heart of your screen. Yeah, run all the way. Got kind of bump there and then he gets hit hard and goes down at that point. Ball popped out of there, but he was already down at that point. Some helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, it appeared there. And a personal foul is the flag. Everybody now with all thoughts and concern with the senior quarterback of the Gaffney Indians. While they tend to Andre Lindsay, we'll take a break. Be back to Gaffney to check on his status on the other side. An abbreviated schedule on Friday night rivals in South Carolina this year, but what a schedule. Dorman and Gaffney here tonight entertaining us to the tune of a 14-14 score as we head into the fourth quarter. Burns and Dorman in what may be a battle for the region championship next week will be at Spartanburg's outstanding new stadium, their pristine new facility, then have the Spartanburg County rivalry that is Spartanburg at Dorman. We finish up with the Anderson County rivalry, West Side at TL Hannah. Quite the season here on Bojangles Friday Night Rivals. Back with more from Gaffney on the other side of the break.
Andre Lindsay having come off the field in at quarterback for Gaffney is J.D. Dowdle and the Dorman defense answered the bell. That ended up being an untimed down at the end of the third period, Tom. So now we head to the fourth quarter, 14 all between the Cavaliers and the Indians. Nothing settled just yet and 12 minutes of football to determine which of these two teams ranked as high as one and two in the Palmetto State are going to escape the reservation undefeated tonight. But this game just turned in a major way on a storyline, and you hope that everything's going to be just fine with Andre Lindsay as we do in relation to all these young men, all these kids on both sides. But how long Gaffney's without their quarterback here is going to become a major storyline in this football yeah, game. 6'3", 205, a senior three-year starter, came in more than uh, 5,000 yards passing, 45 touchdowns his career, over 3,000 last year. And, 25 touchdowns and uh, anytime you can have that kind of experience, particularly under setter, it, it's a huge advantage for your team. He did get up, he did come off, and uh, hopefully he'll have that opportunity. And so, you know, you've got a three-year starter and, and a young man in a backup role who probably hasn't had a lot of snaps. Uh, and uh, w what you can do is you can rely on that big offensive line of yours and see you've got Tyler Smith, maybe get him a little bit more involved. And, you know, there's some versatility we know with Dattle because uh, he's a return guy that they, the linebacker, but a return guy that, that showed up last week very well against Boiling Springs. So uh, we'll see. I'm just going to be paired down a little bit. And, you know, it's going to be one of those situations where you, you, if you've lost your leader, Let's see what we're going to do right now, guys. Aside from that, as we enter the fourth quarter, give me another item or two that you're keeping an eye on across this final 12 minutes that will determine this football game. If the 12 minutes here determine it, we may play deeper than that. Who knows? But what do you see this coming down to now, Tom? Well, if Dorman gets back into uh, the scoring position, they need to make sure they take advantage of them. They haven't had many opportunities in this ball game to, on the Gaffney side of the fifth. Dowdle shuffles the pass but fools nobody. White jerseys everywhere, and Dorman able to cover up Pesor, the senior wideout with nowhere to hide. Well, and you really, if you're, uh, you're Gaffney, you need to keep your offense on. Now they got to kick it away here because we talked about the disparity in the numbers, 20 plays to, I believe, three in the third quarter uh, that it was dominated by Dorman in that category. And Cesar Arellano going to stand in his own end zone just inside the Gaffney end zone as he receives the snap and kicks this away. And it's going to bounce at the 30. Take a small Gaffney bounce up to around the 33-yard line, and Dorman will be set up nicely offensively. The Cavaliers set to go to work in a 14-14 game, and after the 20-yard punt, they'll have it in Gaffney territory. Well, we want to check in with Mark and find out a little more on the injury situation. What's it look like down there, Mark? Well, it's a little hit and miss. It's a little hard to tell. Andre Lindsay was uh, kind of up, seemed to be getting like a little bit of concussion protocol watching, you know, the finger of the trainer. Then he's laying back, getting his legs stretched out. Then he's back sitting up again. Uh, but the, the look and the body language is certainly slightly dejected. So we'll, we'll call his return at this point questionable, guys. 11 minutes in the football game, eight kicks in addition to it as Dorman takes over. Thank you so much, Mark. And the Cavaliers with Ty Lindsay taking over and inside the 20 yard line is Ty Lindsay for Dorman. Or check that chance black on the carry once again as black is stopped inside the 20 yard line. There is a flag that we've spotted all the way back at the 38 yard line. So this chance black run will hinge on the call from our officials. The officials tonight, by the way, William H. Bill Reed, our referee. The umpire is Alfonso Smith. The linesman is Spencer Goforth. Dustin Farmer is our line judge. And the back judge is Chuck Cawthon. So that's our officiating crew tonight. This will march Dorman a little deeper into Gaffney territory, Tom. So a big penalty. And the Cavaliers in the red zone. Yeah, another tough run by Black. He's up to 144 yards now. And, you know, this Dorman 
offense has been on the field so long. I mean, the defense for Gaffney has to be a little bit gassed at this point, and then you tack on the face mask, and Black wanted that call, and he got it. Gaffney has never led tonight. Torman led 7-0 after the pick six in the first quarter. They led 14-7 after the opening drive here in the third. And the Cavaliers trying to go back up 21-14. They will into the heart of the end zone. Chance Black and the senior puts Dorman back out front a third time at 20 to 14. Well, another great field position after a short uh, punt there. Set it up and they were able to take it in. Good patience there. And big boys blocking up front and able to follow him in for the touchdown. Yeah, just a, just a, a moving scenario all the way around as he just waits to see who's going to open up the space. 10-42 remaining in the football game. And Dorman out front. 21-14 as for the third time, Omar Khan punches it through. So the Gaffney quarterback down for the moment. The Dorman offense clicking on all cylinders, especially behind Chance Black. Just talk like this. Do like this. Okay. Welcome back to Gaffney, South Carolina. 21-14, our score in favor of Dorman. It's time to meet one of the great teachers. And I'll tell you, if you've been watching this broadcast, the value of teachers has increased exponentially over the last six months and what they mean to families. And this Rachel Smiley is a biology and chemistry teacher here at Gaffney High School. And talk a little bit about the hybrid learning system and how you've had to adjust as a teacher, because you got to teach kids in person, which science is a very big course to teach in person, mm -hmm. but you also have to teach, you know, online as well simultaneously. Talk about the challenges with all that. Well, thank you for the compliment. I appreciate that, and we all do. But um, the challenges mostly for me with teaching in general have been the planning, um, because you really have to plan like two weeks ahead of time almost for every week and just be prepared days ahead for virtual and in-school learning and figuring out how those two are going to work together. So that's definitely been a challenge. With labs and things like that, um, we just kind of shorten our activities and they're only in a close vicinity for a short amount of time and they always have their masks on. So that's not been too difficult to deal with, but the planning and adjusting has been the major difference. Well, when it, it comes to science, it's something that's always you know talked about a little bit. How do you get kids excited about science? I know it's been <laughs> a, a question for thousands of years for science teachers, but in this day and age, science means a lot. How do you get kids excited about science? I mean, I'm excited about science, and I do my best to... Hold on just a second. <laughs> Put it back upstairs to you guys. Is that us? Well, here is that explosive versatility from J.D. Dowdle. He spent some time at quarterback tonight. He's been an impact player at the linebacker position. And Tommy shows you what he can do in that return game. Remember, did this a couple of times last week, earned himself a spot in a little more of an elevated role. And now 52 yards later, he has Gaffney in business. Yeah, Coach Jones said, why don't we put him back there? He was kind of an up back and was highly successful last week. And, you know, one of the few times kicked it deep and pooching it a little bit, and he took advantage of it. Look who's back. Quarterback Andre Lindsay gives this off, and that's a welcome sight for the Gaffney Indians. So big development here as Andre Lindsay is back into the game at quarterback for Gaffney, and we check back in with Mark for his interview as we learn a little more about Gaffney High School. Rachel Smiley, uh, science teacher, just wrap up that question we were talking about. How do you get kids excited about science? Well, I'm very excited about science. I just am I'm pumped in class all the time, and I do my best to make it relatable, try to tell them like how it works in the world and how this happens in their bodies and so 
basically just make it relatable and be excited myself. Thank you so much for all you're doing as a teacher for our students. I know I appreciate it and all of our folks watching at home to do as well. Rachel Smiley right here from Gaffney High School. Thank you. I think it's safe to say Andre Lindsay looks just fine, Tom. Yeah, looks good. I tell you what, again, much like his counterpart, uh, Foster, able to break some tackles. There's one. Keep watching. Going to get by there and still act like he was going to throw the football and spins away from two more before he's chased down from behind. Gaffney keeping it on the ground into the red zone, down inside the 20-yard line. The Indians handing the football off to Tyler Smith. There's the junior once again, and Gaffney, it seems like it takes a dormant <laughs> score. Jabor, yeah, you're right. For, for Gaffney to, to, <laughs> to find a way to keep it moving. And here come the Indians again looking to tie as the these teams have scored back-to-back -back twice in this football game. And Gaffney looking to make that three times as we close in on nine minutes remaining. Everything you would have expected between teams ranked in the top five in the state, no matter what poll you look at. And across the 10 where he's tripped up and falls to the turf is Tyler Smith. That is enough to move those chains. That is a USC Union first down for Tyler Smith. And if he doesn't trip there, he may end up in the end zone. Getting him more involved in the game. Six foot 180 junior. First and goal for the Gaffney Indians. 8.45 and ticking downward remaining. Gorman up a score on the road as the Cavaliers out of Region 2 5A take on the Region 3 5A power in Gaffney. And right through the seam and into the end zone. Goes Andre Lindsay. Quite a return to game action for the senior quarterback. Well, Gorman had an opportunity with momentum on their side and the kick return set it up. Lindsay returns. And boy, was he effective. Oops, oops there. He's down on his backside, but able to get across the double strikes. So Gaffney, an extra point shy of evening things up at 21 apiece. Their left footed kicker, A.J. Hames, who was perfect on extra points a year ago, and he misses. And it will stay 21 20. Dorman leading Gaffney by that extra point. So Gaffney goes on the march. And Hames unable to connect on the extra point. But here's how the Indians found the end zone, Tom. One more look at Andre Lindsay's run. Yeah, he is a, a dual threat quarterback who can throw it and, and can run it. And he demonstrated that there. Had gone down uh, on a hard hit series before that. Then after Dorman was able to get into the end zone, it is amazing how we've seen this every time that that uh, Dorman gets on the board, then uh, Gaffney has an answer. That's a big missed extra point with 8:33 to go in a one-point ball game. And you have to remember a couple of field goals Gaffney tried earlier yeah. at around the 35 to 40-yard range that uh, both were no good, missed to the right side, and then here's the extra point the same direction. So Gaffney in the kicking game tonight. Both these coaches talk about it, <laughs> such a key element. And how many times have we seen it over the years? One extra point here, one field goal there, making all the difference in these football games. A lot of time left, though, at 8.33 to go. Dan Jones' face tells you about everything you need to know, however. A short punt uh, by Gaffney set up that third touchdown. Uh, by Dorman and the outstanding kick return. Well, we saw the return by Ty Lindsay that uh, set things up to begin with the third possession to the third quarter from 35 yard line. So a couple of short drives for Dorman, but boy, the ability of, uh, of Gaffney, you always talk about, and it's easier said than done, move on to the next play, the next play. Well, you know what? Pretty, pretty good job there. So the Indians to kick it away. Dorman set to return. With a couple of players back at around the five yard line. Here's a strong left foot into it. And out across the 15 to the 20. There is a flag down. And as Porter returns it up to the 30 yard line, that is DJ Porter, a sophomore wide receiver for the Cavaliers on the return. But again, flags down at the 19 and 24 yard lines, respectively. So we await word from. Our referee, Bill Reed. Well, Tom, you talked about making sure that you know you just shake that play off and, <laughs> and work your way forward. 
Here comes the call, and Bill Reed indicates a block in the back. And that'll back Dorman up just a little bit, and they take over. Here comes in a, a very important drive for the Dorman Absolutely. Cavaliers. Absolutely, and field position. I mean, you look at uh, Dorman's had it from the 35. Their own, or from the Gaffney 35, and scored a touchdown. And then from the 17-yard line, had a long drive and turned it over on a, a fumble recovered by uh, Hemphill, and then had it from the 33-yard line. So this is a big offensive set. It's also a big defensive uh, situation for Gaffney as well. He can get it back in good field position. Both teams with a touchdown in the first quarter. Both teams with a touchdown in the third quarter. Now both teams with a touchdown here in the fourth period of action. And with 8.20 to play, it's a first down run for Chance Black. That's a USC Union first down. It's Chance Black breaks loose here. And as Dorman, a little more breathing room, Tom. Yeah, wants to, his coach told us, they want to establish the run. They've been able to do that, particularly behind that young man who's up to 165 yards now. Our first downs in the second half brought to you by USC Union. Stay close to home or work for your first two years, then finish online or on campus. You can make it work. Your time is now. That's USC Union and the first down play stopped by Gaffney. Indians celebrating with one another just a little bit as they will drop the Dorman ball carrier for a loss. He has landed Bullock, one of the linebackers. Coach talked to us about the speed that he had from that inside linebacker spot there. And Anytime he can bring down that young man like that, that's an outstanding play. Was the junior, and it creates a second down and 13. Pursued. Dropped. The sack by Trey Burgess of Zay Foster. Tay Burgess has played well tonight. Uh, early on, so much of the conversation was about to his running mate right next to him and Tyrion Ingram Dawkins. But in and, in and of himself, that young man's had a nice night. Can be overlooked just a little bit in terms of being beside of Ty Ingram Dawkins on the line. But we've called number 33's name, Trey Burgess, early and often. And he puts Dorman in a third and long situation. Line to make the 32-yard line for a Cavaliers team three of seven on third downs in this football game. Dorman tries to set up a screen, see if they can find some room on the sideline. And up across the 20 is about all that will be available to Kendall Norman as he is out of bounds well shy of the first down. And the Cavaliers are set to kick it away. Yeah. A little bit of kicking woes here and there on both sides. It's been in the punting game for Dorman that they're still looking for the ability to really put a good strong foot into it. Here's Garrett Williams back to punt once again, the wide receiver who also serves as the Dorman punter. Outstanding wide receiver for the Cavaliers. And boy, does he get a foot into this one. And it looks like there was a timeout awarded before yep. the punt. So he really put a booming kick together there, Tom. But the officials had already signaled the timeout. And so the fourth down play, the punt, will be run once yeah, more. Yeah, Gaffney was trying to get a man off the field, and it wasn't going to happen. So they called that timeout. And, yeah, that was the best kick that we've seen by Garrett Williams tonight. There have been a couple of that uh, have, have not been so successful. But see if he can duplicate that again. But it all goes back to the, the uh, field position. And Dorman had that. Uh, in the, in the third quarter on two particular occasions. And on the third one, they were able to move the football. And in this case, the penalty put it back. And now Gaffney with uh, midway through the fourth quarter here with 6.34 to go, they're going to have an opportunity to have outstanding field position and see if they can punch it in there and take the lead. They've been playing from behind all night so far. Every time Dorman scores, and uh, <laughs> Gaffney comes back and, and scores. So... We'll see how the Norman defense can do here. 48-23 and 19 on the punts. And that was going to be in more of that 48 range there, Tom. But uh, called back on the timeout that was awarded to Gaffney. And so Garrett Williams will be set to put a foot into it once again. And here's a fourth down kick, end over end. And it'll be taken at the 40-yard line. Coming back the other way is Paysour, and he will be into Dorman territory at the 48-yard line. So Gaffney will 
have the football right at midfield as the offense comes on the field. We think about the defensive impact that has been out there tonight. Brings us to our dirty jersey of the game selection. Brought to you by Henson's Mulch and more. And our dirty jersey, Tom, going to go in the direction of Trey Burgess. You talked about the impact he had made a moment ago. Here's some of his good work tonight. Yeah, you're watching a young man that's 6'3", 250, a senior, showing his athletic and versatility. And he's had a heck of a night tonight. The nose tackle, Trey Burgess. And that's the Henson's Mulch and more dirty jersey of the game. First down, Gaffney. Just inside Dorman territory. They end up spotting this at the 47-yard line. Able to elude the first run of tacklers is Smith, and he's down to the 34-yard line. So good run to get the Gaffney series started by Tyler Smith. Yeah, there was much there in the little jump cut you'll see, and then watch what he does with the football. He's coming this way. He's going to put it over in his left hand so that if he gets to the sideline and gets hit, he'll knock it out of bounds maybe. Gaffney in search of its first lead of the night. They trailed Dorman after the interception return for touchdown, the pick six in the first quarter by Zion Lindsay. Answered that with a touchdown from Johnson. They've answered every time, but the missed extra point has the Indians trailing 21-20. As Tyler Smith slips down. Norman's touchdown in the third period on the opening drive, putting the Indians behind. And then a moment ago, the, the run by Chance Black. And you see how difficult footing became for Tyler Smith there. Second down and short for Gaffney inside the Dorman 30 at the 26-yard line. A one-point football game between teams in some of the polls ranked one and two. An open space inside the 15. In fact, all the way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. It's going to be first and goal, Gaffney with five and change remaining. That's another USC Union first down I for mean, the Indians. One gigantic hole up the middle, just an outstanding job. Ethan Wood is the center. Sawyer Whitman, the right guard. And it's Smith once again. He's down to the seven-yard line on the first and goal play. And they have relied heavily upon Tyler Smith throughout this drive after uh, the return, putting Gaffney in business here. This is a big and experienced offensive line as well. We talked about Dorman's ability in, in that particular category, but very good is Gaffney as well up front. It's for bragging rights, maybe bragging rights only, a non-region battle between Gaffney and Dorman. It certainly will send a, a signal about who could be the premier team in the upstate of South Carolina, but no region win on the line. If you just happen to be joining us late, as the false start will back Gaffney up, the Indians move to Region 3 5A for this 2020 season with realignment in South Carolina. Dorman remained in Region 2 5A, so while this is a huge battle between highly ranked old-time foes, it's for nothing more than one more in the win column. Won't affect their playoff positioning they're playing it like it is a playoff game however and this is beyond the reach of the intended target in the back of the end zone and Gaffney with 418 to play trying to make use of this red zone opportunity here comes a big third down play and you think about the kicking uh, uh, issues that Gaffney has had tonight at a pair of opportunities missed field goal missed point after so this will be an interesting call here and, and maybe uh, an interesting call on fourth down as well. Gaffney tonight, five of nine on third down conversions. And the Indians looking for the goal line here. It's third down and goal. As this series started inside the 10. And just throwing this up toward the corner of the end zone. Well, there was contact out near the goal line, and a flag is down at the two-yard line after the contact with Lindsey firing that toward the back of the end zone, Tom. Yeah, I think it's uh, Ty Lindsey gets hooked up with Kobe Pesor. We get a look at it here. Those two uncatchable, but right there on the goal line. Official had a great look at it. Ends up sailing beyond the back of the end zone. And our referee, Bill Reed, coming over as Dave Gutshaw and everyone in the stadium awaits the call. It is going to be pass interference against Dorman. It will stick 
and that's going to give Gaffney a fresh set of downs and a little closer proximity to the goal line. Yeah, big play there, and the ball was uh, way overthrown, but there was contact, and Fisher was right there looking at it. Good look at Coach Gutshaw. He had a good look at it, too. It was over on uh, his sideline. Actually going to bring him a little closer here to the seven-yard line. Or the Indians will toss this to Smith, and Smith tries to find the outside corner. He will not be able to do so, and is out of bounds at the five-yard line. A good pursuit there, a little toss sweep, trying to come to the short side of the field. Sometimes you count the numbers and see how many are over that way. And Smith had a big late second half for this Gaffney. So the third down play after it simply moved Gaffney closer will be driven out of bounds at the five and fourth down Indians means a third field goal attempt in this football game for Gaffney and A.J. Haynes who has missed a couple and missed an extra point on the last Gaffney touchdown puts a left foot into it and this time he drills it from 22 yards out A.J. Haynes connects and Gaffney has taken the lead 23-21 with just over four minutes to play. A gutsy kick for that young yes, man sir. after the start to his night. And it's how you finish that they remember. And his latest kick, a big one for Gaffney. Well, Gaffney taking advantage of a uh, pretty good field position to drive it down. And then uh, there was a penalty there and moved it a little bit closer and then had that opportunity. And, and you're right, you got to be weighing on you a little bit because some of those kicks, you know, 37, 40 range, not, not automatic by any stretch of the imagination. But that one, you get in position, had missed uh, the extra point. Good job by that young man to knock it through. So we got 4.06 left. It's a 23-21 ball game. That's a lot of time for this high-powered Dorman offense, Tom Van Hoy. Yes, it is. But, you know, the field position last time was critical, I think. It provided the opportunity for Gaffney to get uh, into position to be able to do just this. It was up and through their left foot from the hash on that side. <laughs> Sneaks in there, got it. A.J. Haynes able to put Gaffney out front, and now he gets set to kick it away to the Dorman Cavaliers. Four minutes, six seconds with the way this game is going in the fourth quarter, that could be an eternity for these offenses. Two one and O teams. Gaffney defeating Boiling Springs 33-23 a week ago. Dorman a winner 69 to 24 on the road at Riverside. They both got big games coming up next week. Norman versus Burns, Gaffney at Nations Ford may determine their regions. Tonight, going to determine the latest edition, the 69th edition of this rivalry, and fighting for every yard up across the 30-yard line is D.J. Porter, who gives Dorman some room to work with here on the return. Yeah, Porter's a guy has got a whole lot of, of uh, involvement uh, in the passing game that I've a young man they really do like. And I tell you, we've seen it tonight to a certain extent with some some tackling issues and some had some chance to bring some uh, players down, but you know it's early in the year. Even though it's in October, it's early in the year. It's only the second game, so that'll come. Porter with SEC offers on the table. Arkansas, Percy, one of those players that played in his freshman campaign on varsity, and here is a sophomore already drawing some attention at the next level, and both teams pointing at one another yeah. uh, almost hopeful that this flag is going to go the other way we'll see who is correct as our officials end up sorting all this out boy what a football game tonight in terms of the punch and counter punch between the cavaliers and the indians here's the call it is going to go against Dorman, so a false start, not an offsides, and it'll back the Cavaliers up a bit. Yeah, and you look at it at 356, and with Gaffney having had the ability to run the football with Smith, you're wondering if you might not get it back. It may not be the full contingency at the reservation tonight, but you can certainly tell those who are here. The fans making their presence known as Dorman takes it up across the 30-yard line, and the clock rolls on down. 3.45 and ticking for the Cavaliers. Still behind the sticks here at the 30-yard line. Yeah, if you're Dorman, you want to just, you don't need to, you know, get in a hurry to a certain extent as far as throwing the football. Get yourself in position and maybe kick it to win. Say Foster in a huge football game here. Rolls out. Got a man beyond the, the marker. 
And who is it but D.J. Porter, who had the return a moment ago. Porter going to move the chains. That's a USC Union first down for Dorman. Cavaliers on the march headed toward midfield here. Take another look at the yeah. connection between Foster and Porter. Rolling left, got good blocking up front. Had a man open. You're able to make that connection and you move the change. Foster, Chance Black waits for it to develop and then he finds the corner and he's off to the races. 20 10 touchdown Dorman. The Cavaliers are back out front by the speedster Chance Black. Yeah, once he gets beyond the final defensive player there, not many people are going to catch him at all. Boy, I don't know how he tight roped the sideline. I don't know how he was able to maintain his balance and stay in bounds but he was able to do that how about that all region player virginia tech commitment chance black finds the corner yep. somehow you said it right there when the contact was made able to keep his balance and it was no question after he worked his way down that far sideline that chance black was going to find pay dirt 27 23 Dorman after chance black's latest contribution Tell you what, that was uh, great camera work as well to get that shot on the sideline because we're on the opposite side broadcasting. I thought, well, maybe he was going to be knocked out of bounds, but he wasn't as he able to get there. And I thought right there about the 49, he might have stepped out, but he didn't. And once he got past uh, Dabble there, he's a sprinter, and he showed that sprinter speed. Ran for. Almost 1,500 yards and 16 touchdowns a year ago. Looks a little bigger, looks a little stronger. Looks as if he's just as locked in, Tom. And Chance Black with over 200 yards rushing tonight for the Dorman he's Cavaliers. He's been good between the tackles, too, at 190 pounds. But, boy, once he got to the outside, and man, that that is a, a gut punch right there for Gaffney. But you know what? you got three minutes left, and Gaffney's had an answer every time Dorman's put one on the board. Remember now, this was a 7-7 football game at the half. Dorman with a defensive touchdown on a pick six from the 12-yard line. Gaffney with the lone offensive score. It was 7-all, but the fourth quarter has been a different story as these teams continue to answer one another. Cavaliers going for two. Dorman trying to make it 29-23, and they will connect. That. It's the big man making the catch. D.J. Geth, the tight end, has his number called, and Dorman is up 29-23. The Cavaliers true on the drive, true on the two-point try. Chance Black putting Dorman back out front with one of his longer runs of what is a 200-plus yard night. Here's the touchdown that has given the Cavaliers a 29-23 lead. And 70-yard run last week against Riverside and caught a 
touchdown pass as well over 40 yards. And boy, he has been huge in this game, particularly in the second half. These teams having met 26 times since the year 2000, including six playoff meetings. Just a reminder for those of you joining us late, perhaps in this game, they have met for the upper state championship game in the semifinals two of the last three years. A little short kick. Gaffney will have it up around the 40 yard line. They opted not to kick it back in the direction of J.D. Dowda, who had that outstanding return for Gaffney earlier. So the Indians will have 254 with which to work down the six points. Both teams with one timeout remaining. Worth beginning to consider as we dip under three minutes to play. That's one of those decisions, Jason, where he kicked it deep last time and Dowdle brought it back. But if you kick it short right there and great field position for 42. Banged up earlier in the game, but returned to lead his team on a touchdown drive. And another that resulted in what was a go-ahead field goal a few moments ago, Andre Lindsey. He is back at the helm at the Gaffney 42-yard line. That was Gaffney's only lead of the game, and it was for a brief moment. Lindsey up at the 47-yard line as he connects with Logan. Yeah, you can work it methodically. You have to get it all at once, but this may be the last time you touch the football. Logan actually out of bounds closer to midfield. They're going to set it just on the Gaffney side of the 50-yard line. You look at that coaching staff, 11th-year head coach Dan Jones. He led Gaffney to their 17th, 16th if you talk to the South Carolina people, but the 17th state championship back in 2012. Both these teams have the horses to get there again. Gaffney showing the talent level of the young Mr. Pay Sewer who crossed the state line to play a little high school football here in Cherokee County. He has a USC Union first down and Gaffney in business with 242 to play. And it shows you the uh, experience of Lindsey. He wanted to go to the right side of the field. It wasn't there. He bought himself some time, had his eyes downfield coming across uh, the field. Was Paysor, and he was able to gather it in. Great field position now. Paysor will be playing in the opposite color scheme that he's looking at here tonight. He'll be in that light blue. He's going to be a North Carolina Tar Heel in Chapel Hill. He's enrolling in December. That's the reason he couldn't wait for the North Carolina high school football season to be played in the spring if he was going to play his senior year. The give off is to Tyler Smith. That's what landed Paysor and Gaffney. Smith goes to the right side with it. He ends up with. A second down and about five as he gets half the yardage Gaffney needs. And the clock winding down toward two minutes to play as these teams go back and forth in a score trading fourth quarter. Lindsay slowing things down just a little bit as the three year starter for Gaffney. He was looking deep, loaded up. But too much pressure, and Lindsey is able to just get rid of it before he is dropped. Well, one of the players on the scene there for Dorman was Hudson Lee. That's the brother of last year's Dorman quarterback, Hayden Lee. And you see just how quickly things came toward a close there. A good job by Lindsey to just get that ball out of there. I thought he was going to be wrapped up and maybe tackled by a pair of Norman players there, but strong enough, big enough to just get it downfield and avoid the sack and keep the football where it is. Seth Freeman was in there, able to get his arms wrapped around Lindsey. Working his way off the field is Ryan Johnson, one of those key linebackers. Johnson, a special linebacker. He Came in last year because of an injury. You think about that with him leaving here. And he refused to leave the starting lineup. Yeah. Once he came in, they couldn't get him out of there. And out. he ended up becoming a regular starter. He's one of the strong pieces of that Dorman defense is Ryan Johnson. And he'll have to miss a player, so at least here, hopefully he'll be able to return soon. Third down for Gaffney. And now you're looking with the couple of field goals earlier that were in this range where Gaffney is now at the Indians needing with 1.54 to go. If you look at it, the, the one timeout, not really giving the opportunity for Gaffney to look at more than just making it two down territory at this point, you would think. And Lindsey toward the end zone. 
caught, stretching it out over the pylon for a touchdown, and Gaffney has found their way even with Dorman at 29 apiece. With pace or he yeah. went up and got it. It, it was, was pace or once again. He lands right in the midst of that cheerleading group, and now a flag comes out, and that becomes critical at the 147 mark. Watch Lindsey on the toss on a third down play when Gaffney had to have it, and it is the North Carolina commit pace or. Well, battling there and you know, powered in just inside the pylon there and get the touchdown. Wins a good job to buy some time. A really good coverage there in the secondary by Tillerson. Still leaves 147 on the clock, and with the way these last several drives have gone, Tom, that's time for a couple more possessions on each side, yeah, right? Like I said a minute ago, oh, four minutes to go, that might, you know, <laughs> maybe the last drive. Well, just getting into the fact that they were going to have two downs to work with it there as we get the unsportsmanlike penalty assessed here. And they only need the one down, just the third down play all Gaffney needed in order to put that in the end zone. So 147 left. And Gaffney now looking for the extra point that would put the Indians back out front. Remember, a missed extra point earlier in this football game for Gaffney. So while not automatic, it is key. And this time, Haynes is good again. He kicked the field goal that put Gaffney out front on the prior Indian drive. And here he has the extra point that will give Gaffney a 30-29 advantage with 1.47 to go. And we were talking about the last four games that have been played here. Gaffney wins 14-0 in 2012 and 14-49-45 Norman, 35-48-45 uh, Norman, and then the last one was 22-19, and you get a look at it. Gets in there again. Well, and so he's the missed, last four have been really close. He's four. missed the three that he's missed tonight. The extra point, the two vehicles to the right, and that was trending that <laughs> direction as well. But he snuck it inside the right upright, and redemption for AJ Hames to this point. As for the second time now, his kick on the field goal earlier, and this time on the extra point, has put the Indians into the lead. The only two leads they've had tonight, interestingly enough, have come off those two kicks. One the field goal, one the extra point by A.J. Haynes, but hold everything. <laughs> Nothing settled yet here in the upstate of South Carolina as Dorman, explosive as they are, will get another crack at it. Zay Foster, Chance Black, and company taking a march down the field the last time around. It took very little time off the clock, plenty of time left for Dorman. That's why we love it. It's unscripted and, you know, you break it all down, seven, seven and a half. It's been that type of ball game. Lo and behold, we have a minute 47 to go. We got a shootout here. 14 yep. 14 at the end of the third quarter. So <laughs> most of this happening in the fourth period of action. And now aims to kick it away. And Anthony, players on that sideline, enjoying the latest twist and turn in the unfolding drama that is this early October high school football game between two of the top teams in the state. See if they kick it deep here. And Dan Jones was trying desperately to get the attention of the official. He's going to burn his final yeah. time out ahead of the kickoff with 147 to play. He didn't like something that he saw. I mean, we've seen tonight uh, kick the ball deep. We've seen him kick it short. If you kick it deep, and we've seen uh, that be effective for Gaffney kicking the ball uh, deep here in the second half and the coverage that they've had there. So, In recent years, Dorman has been the hump that Dan Jones' Gaffney teams have been trying to get over. Tonight they have the lead with 147 to play, and the critical moments of this game going to come down to what his special teams on this kickoff and his defense can do on the backside of this. Yeah. In there have been some just great games as we talked about in the bio there of uh, Coach Jones. 28 years he's been here at Gaffney. And last state championship was in 2012. Well, you remember the days of Phil Strickland. And, to go back before that, yeah. Joe Montgomery putting yeah. championships on the board here in the 90s. A.L. Curtis winning one in the 80s. Bob Prevett, all that success in the 1960s. They've had some good ones here follows in those footsteps and Dan Jones believing both these schools believe they have the horses 
to get back to Columbia and claim another state title this year. And this may be a preview of one of the stops along the journey come playoff time in the month of November. Right now, October bragging rights are on the line, and Dorman will take over just across the 35 at the 37-yard line. They'll have 142 to work with, and one timeout is on the board for the Cavaliers. Well, what a game this has been. I mean, what a start to, that we've had to, the, to our broadcast season so far. You, you love and you live to play in these types of circumstances. You know, last week in the state of North Carolina, Raven Gap scoring with seven seconds to play and come from behind fashion to defeat Christ School here in our South Carolina opener tonight, the national game of the week. On Friday night, rivals may very well come down to the last snap again. And Dorman with a first down into Gaffney territory at the 45-yard line. They turn to Kendall Norman once more to move the chains. Yep, and Omar. Khan is a young man that uh, has had success kicking field goals in his career. Now for Gaffney, can they get the pressure they're looking for from the highly touted Ty Ingram Dawkins and company on that front line for the Indians? Dorman Zay Foster is under pressure, and the left-hander is just going to toss this out. May have been contacted. It's going to be incomplete. Some of the folks on the Gaffney side looking for a flag, and there it is now at the 45-yard line. A flag down and 114 on the game clock. The grounding call is going to back Dorman up, and that loss to down proves costly too, Tom. Yeah, I think uh, there's an offensive lineman in, in the area, but uh, that, uh, that call is going to be a tough one. I mean, uh, again, Foster, a lot like uh, Lindsay, has the ability to get away from pressure, but uh, it came from the right side by Dawkins and and others were headed that way. It forced him into a difficult situation. He was trying to make a play there, but the penalty will go against Dorman. Games like these don't always live up to the hype. But number one, number two, top five, whatever poll you look at in the state, it's been everything you could have hoped. And Dorman has a man in behind the defense, and this is going to be caught down to the 10-yard line goes Kendall Norman, and the long connection has Dorman in position to reclaim the advantage with just over a minute to yeah, play. The last thing you want to do is get beat deep on a pattern like that, and you're rolling left, left-handed, able to get enough air under it, and, and Norman uh, able to corral it, and now Dorman has got a great opportunity here. Talk about bouncing back after difficulty. We saw the kicking game from Gaffney a moment ago. Here's the grounding penalty that puts Dorman behind the sticks. And what do the Cavaliers do? They end up going 50 yards on the connection and they're into the Gaffney red zone and down to the five yard line. As he spins forward with the football, goes Chance Black under a minute to play in Gaffney. And the defending upper state champions have control of the football game in terms of their own destiny right now at the five-yard line down a point. Be surprised if they do anything but hand the ball off to Black. Say Foster, oh. tough snap. Black's going to have to chase this down. Can he get on top of it? He does, but all the way back at the 31-yard line. Oh, oh, man. And the clock's still running at 25 seconds. Remember, Dorman with just the one timeout, and they're going to take it right now. With 25 seconds remaining, third and now long coming, and that puts you on the fringe of any opportunity for a field goal in a situation where a field goal was going to easily win you the football yeah, game, perhaps. That ball just sailed on the snap. That's about the fourth time tonight we've seen that that happen. And uh, Foster saved a couple of those along the way. But, I mean, yeah, you just keep playing. You never know after the huge game there. And Black gets four or five up inside, and you think, okay, that's what I was saying is I would be surprised if they did anything but hand it off to Black. And, you know, they just want to eventually, if you get a touchdown, fine. But if you don't, you get, you're in great position to kick a field goal. But the bad snap now, that changes what you want to do here. That was the point. One timeout was in your pocket to stop the clock for the field goal if you cannot get it done in the third, from a touchdown standpoint. Instead, Dorman has to burn their time out with 25 seconds to play, and now they're separated from the end zone by 29 yards where the game for the football is actually going to be spotted with the game on the line and a third down play coming. Let's see if they roll and give him a chance. 
near the sideline. Dorman did not get out of bounds, even though he made the catch. And Dorman's going to have to hurry up to the line. And here comes the play that may very well determine the football game. And Dorman has rushed the kicking unit on to try and win it. Here's Omar Khan from 35 yards out. It's a low kick. It's to the left and no good. And they're celebrating in Gaffney. The Indians will win it by a single point. 30-29. The Gaffney Indians over the Dorman Cavaliers. Well, they got the completion. They got great opportunity to win the ball game on the final kick. You know, you wonder about maybe getting up there and, and clocking it and give yourself a little bit better opportunity to run the ball on a I don't know, and, but they, you know, they got it on, and they had time to, to kick it, but, I mean, it's still kind of rushed with eight seconds yes, uh, to go. absolutely. And then uh, the, had the kick and just missed it. What a football game. Yeah, I mean, amazing football game. <laughs> we'll talk and, about the twist and turns and the roller coaster of emotion that we saw here tonight. That's just in the booth. <laughs> and if the state of South Carolina gets a 70th all-time meeting between Gaffney and Dorman at some point in the playoffs, look out. This one hard to top. There may not have been a region win on the line. It may not have been one of those playoff games from a stakes standpoint, but there certainly was a playoff feel here tonight, Tom. And Gaffney has their win here at home over Dorman that they'll use as motivation for the rest of this season in Region 3 5A and the push toward a state title. Both of these teams very capable of landing in Columbia. The question, will they meet one another on the road there? It did live up to the, the hype and the billing and, and everything that goes in it. You know, here's, with all due respect to ABC, but uh, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat right there on the last play of the game. Well, here is our game-changing moment. It happened with Dorman in position for a short field goal, perhaps to win the game if they couldn't get in the end zone. Instead, the issue with the snap is covered up by Chance Black, and that is our Spartanburg Community College game-changing moment. Ends up resulting in a Gaffney Indian victory, 30-29 to over Dorman. We'll be back to wrap it on the other side of this break. You've watched the classic on Friday Night Rivals. So many game-changing moments in this contest brought to you by Spartanburg Community College. A certificate or degree from SCC can be a life-changing moment for you. Visit SpartanburgCommunityCollege.com to learn how you can have that life-changing moment. Boy, this fourth quarter packed with nothing but game-changing moments. And it ends up with a one-point victory on the scoreboard for a Gaffney team that came out on top in a game marked by the kicking game. Defense was stout also. Here is our defensive play of the game, Tom. Well, that was early on in the, the interception by Dorman. Uh, Zion Lindsay able to give a quick early 7-0 lead to uh, the Dorman Cavaliers. Dorman led the majority of the game, but in the end, Gaffney had come from behind fashion in the fourth quarter, picking up the win. That defensive play of the game brought to you by South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. They remind you to stay safe during COVID-19. You can find out everything you need to know about doing so at scdheck.gov slash COVID-19. That's scdheck.gov slash COVID-19. We'll break away, come back, try 
to reflect upon this one and put a bow on what was another outstanding battle between Dorman and Gaffney.